Red Bull's trade rhythm is back. Can you smell it? A two-stroke excitement. It's electric. Champ's here. Two smoking for life. The champ is definitely here. Smoke on, player. Don't burn it down now. Shane McElgrath. I quite like the king, but it works for me. Hope you enjoy yourself. Hey, hey there, young bud. Hold on now, hold on now. What's your name? I'm Marvin Muscan. I'm the champ. I have never lost here. Ah, uh, there you go. Marvin. Yeah, it looks like we have a problem, Marvin. This bike isn't legal this year. What do you mean? It's a factory gate here. There ain't no Musk, if you must win, come back on the tooth stroke. I'll be glad to let you in when you come back. Welcome back to a magic night here at Straight Rhythm. This guy is no joke. The fans are loving it. Stinky does it. And this could be it. Buddy, that goes down and down hard. Welcome to Pomona, California, where the stars here are bringing a plus one that may not be so fashionable. Machines from another era, no longer in the spotlight, they're welcome again here. An electric bike, determined to be the next big thing, is welcome here. Fancy factory four-strokes have been left at home. Two-stroke power is the right mix to conquer this half-mile-long straight rhythm track. Hey, everybody. Sal Masekela here, and tonight we take you back in time to the 1990s, an era in motocross when the gear sets were mostly pink, punk rock was the definitive sound, and as far as tricks were concerned, a knack-knack was rad. For these elite riders tonight, this is a straightforward challenge, just on some old school machinery. Kind of scary on 125. You think you can go farther, you think you got more power, and then all of a sudden you hit the jump and you just don't go anywhere. Watching these guys try to get some of the rhythms down, and it looks like Porcel just busted it out. That was sick. He went double, double, triple. Oh, he did? Yeah. It's a lot tighter than last year. The transitions are tighter, so you got to be a little bit more precise. The good thing is, like, you got your own lane. You have to stay in your own lane, so you don't have to worry about a guy coming up on the inside. Only guy out there on the on the e-bike against all the two-strokes. I'm kind of a little distracted. I got, got all these sick two-strokes beside me. Bap, bap, bap. Smelling all good down the line. It's sick that McGrath's here, and he's actually running the chest protector. <laughs> Sickest kit here. I'm thinking right now Renzel's got it. The McGrath kit. I'm digging it. I'm kind of jealous of it. I'm the rookie version of the king. You know, that's kind of before he knew he was the king. The jumps are good. I think that dialed in and uh, should be good racing. So far, getting her down, just getting her dialed, trying to find some different lines now. So here's where we're going to make it or break it. I uh, hope nobody pulls the trigger on something big because that means we're all going to have to do it. <laughs> And I'm joined now by a man that all of Pomona is hyped to see, four-time Supercross champion, enjoying retirement, Ryan Dungey. Ryan, what was so cool before we came on camera, I, I watched and I, I saw literally hundreds of people around your van. They're just they're just so happy to see you out here. Yeah, it's it's good to be back. Um, you know, I get to see some of the races, but uh, to compete and be back at a race like this, especially with you know the two strokes and everything like that going on it's been a lot of fun it's been a fun couple weeks yeah after such an exciting season last year you know winning it in the end that by five points and suddenly yeah. you, you 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 it must be interesting to go through the process of like oh what now how do i operate this way it very much is um you know all i knew that after vegas like that was it that was all i had um i was ready to move on and it was a tough decision but like you just said, it's, you know, that's all I've done. I've raced and I've raced for my whole life since I was five. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, the first month was good. Cause you're like, you needed the break right. mentally, physically. But then after that, it's like, I know, I knew myself, it might've been hard and it, and it was tough because I just, I'm always on the go right. and I'm always looking for stuff to do. But, um, it was a learning process. The last year and a half has been tough, but, but, but actually really good. Awesome. Yep. As you, you switch into the next version of yourself, right. I know the appeal of coming to play on two strokes definitely was part of getting you off the couch. Yeah. But how about the trash talk <laughs> from your man 
Ryan Villapoto on on Instagram <laughs> with the Al Dungy. I know you guys have been going at it for a long time, but uh, did that, how much of a part did that play? Oh, very much. I mean, I you know everybody just took, pops their phone out and starts scrolling through their feed, and I'm like. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> so you didn't see it coming. No, no. And I, I talked to, I, you know, Roger DeCoster, our team manager. Um, Jeremy had hit me up. What do you think? You want to do a straight rhythm? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just like, I don't want to say yes to anything right now. And then as it kept getting closer, and then not really many guys were riding the 250, and they're right. looking for guys to ride or on the team were. And um, we were sitting in the shop one day um, prior to Villa Pota sending that out. And we were like, you, they're like, you want to do it? I was like, yeah, let's go. Me and me and Marias, let's let's do it. Right. It'll be fun time. You know, we'll get you know Carlos in there, the team. Yeah. And then he sends that out, and it just was like, yep. Oh, it's on now. It's, it's on. This so. is not fun anymore. No, no. Well, we're gonna get Ryan's perspective right now as Mr. Villapoto is with Kate. The rivalry continues between Ryan Dungey and Ryan Villapoto all the way here to straight rhythm. Although retirees, how does this rivalry compare and translate to the track here tonight? Oh, it's gonna keep going. Um, you know, we we definitely wanna do well and uh, if we get matched up next to each other we uh, you know we're gonna want to beat each other but uh, you know there's uh, we're here at an event that's that's pretty mellow low-key uh, just a lot of fun um, sure we want to we'd like to win or we'd like to beat each other but uh, ultimately it's um, it's cool to be able to line up and not have like anything on the line you know so we're we're here uh, he's you know he's by him being behind the gate he keeps his sponsors happy and the same thing for me like I have a lot of people that help me out and and Yamaha and and uh, and it's just good to keep my name out there and, and get behind the gate so it's a win-win for everybody my, my myself the fans and and uh, and um, and the people that help me obviously the goal Ryan is to have a lot of fun but it's also to win and the word comfortable is something you haven't said yet this weekend how comfortable are you on the bike at this point i think we're there it's uh it's, it took a little bit of time just to get the track to learn the track because you're going straight for so long and there's so many combinations um but now with with quite a bit of practice we're we're feeling comfortable um we're, we're feeling pretty good we're sitting fourth um quickest in practice or, or time qualifying so going this now it's going into bracket racing and you know we'll see where we end up hopefully we're not knocked out early <laughs> well uh, hopefully for you rv and uh, obviously being comfortable is important tina and Jared Stinky came into this event last year as the underdog and pretty much proved that you are the king of two-stroke. Take a look at this cover. And at the bottom there, make no mistake about it. <laughs> king of two-strokes. Uh, what's the anticipation been like leading up to this event? Uh, it's very hectic. A lot of trash talk between us riders. And uh, it's, uh, today, today's the day for me to shine on the two-stroke. And uh, hopefully we can pull through for the fans and the uh, family. And coming in, you proved yourself. But this time, you're not only competing on a 250, you've got the 125. Uh, what do you like better, and how is it to go between the two? Um, it's very difficult to go between the two. Uh, I thought it was going to be easier than, than I anticipated. Uh, personally, I like the 250 two-stroke out on this track better. It uh, suits more my style and uh, enables us to do bigger jumps. All right, so there you guys go. Ms. Make no mistake about it. King of two strokes will be in both classes. Uh, send it back over to you. Now, don't get it twisted. We're not living completely in the past here tonight. Perhaps the bike of the future is here. Darren Durham will be riding the Alta electric bike in the 250 class. We will see how the future marks up against the past. Legendary motocross announcer Art Ekman was scheduled to join us tonight in the broadcast, but Art had a medical procedure this week and is home recovering. He's watching from home. Art, we wish you the very best in your recovery. And right now, how about we get to racing? I'm going to put you in the hands of my man, Jason Wigand, and the legend, Grant Langston. Well, thanks, as always, Sal. When we last saw you, Grant Langston, at Red Bull Straight Rhythm four years ago, you were a competitor, kind of ahead of your time with the coming out of retirement to try this. Event's totally different. We moved from the drag strip on one side of the Fairplex to the horse track behind us, and now we've taken the big, fast four strokes away, but I would suppose it's the same basic challenge, a lot of jumps with no turns to mark where you are on the course. It is it's a lot tougher than you can imagine. Uh, corner speed, not necessary, yeah. but you've got to get a good drive and keep your momentum. Getting a rhythm is one thing, but if you make a mistake, how do you get back in it? And the other big factor, a lot of these riders grew up on four strokes. Now we go back to two strokes, it changes the game a little bit. And I think there's two things to figure out here. The older guys might be further removed from pro racing, but they have more experience on two strokes. The youngsters, 
have more experience with four strokes, more in the game. But when you add it all up, I'm telling you, this is going to be very equal, I think. Yeah, probably one of the most unpredictable races we've ever seen. Let's get a little more in-depth with our course preview. We're on board with Jordan Smith from earlier in the weekend. Well, you heard him hard off the clutch off the metal grade star drop in over that dragon back. Little double in here. We call this a bit of a speed check. You got to check your speed over there. Then through this rhythm, we've seen riders doubling through there. But if you can go and triple, triple, it's a big gainer. Step up here, only one way to do it. Little double, multiple rhythms through here. But he got to get on and off those tabletops. You see Smith separating himself from his competitor when he got that clean. Another speed check. Double, triple over this midsection tunnel jump. Another little slow down jump. Once again, this is going to be another good opportunity to make a mistake or to gain some time. If you can get over these tabletop sections quick, one more speed check. Got to get clean through these whoops. Great drive through there to the finish line. Hopefully, you get that checker flag first. And the event format, since it's all two strokes this year, 250 and 125 class, that's retro. We do have an electric bike that's entered in the 250cc division, the Alta. We have 16 riders in the 250 class, eight in the 125s. It's bracket style racing, so we'll go head to head throughout the night until we get to our finals and determine champions in both the 250 and 125 classes. Who will look good throughout qualifying and practice? Well, in that 125 class, which actually does allow up to 150, it's Carson Brown, relatively new to the pro ranks, but did do a lot of 125 racing as an amateur in what they call the schoolboy division, and the number 910 had the fastest time. Yeah, he looked good out there. And one thing about that 125, you got to carry momentum. Doubles become di more difficult on these bikes. So you got to be precise. And Brown looked really good. Nailed the downsides, got the transitions clean. And you can see he just stretched it away just a little bit. OK, so the story right now, you look at Brown. He's a relative newcomer. Rensland's been around a while. He's on a really cool Jeremy McGrath lookalike bike. He's second quickest. But in the 250 class, if Carson Brown's the best of the 125s, a young kid, opposite story in this division, Ryan Dungey. He's raced Red Bull straight rhythm a few times, but he has never raced any event at all on a 252 stroke. Didn't look it, he was number one in qualifying. Well, Dungey, not that far off for time, and I'm telling you, that helps a lot. That KTM was barking in uh, qualifying. He looked really good, and I think Ryan's missing this competitive nature. He looks like he wants this real bad. I'm just gonna go down and say the Ryans really wanna win tonight. <laughs> and the other Ryan is in the mix. He was fast, uh, fourth quickest, Jordan Smith and Shane McArath, who are current factory riders. They were second and third. There is the rest of your 250 field. A lot of big names in there. It's going to be exciting. So now we see who can step up in game time. We've had qualifying. We've had practice. We have our bracket set. But now the racing is going to count. Bracket style racing. We'll get through the left side of the bracket. You can see on the screen here, Ryan Dungey against the veteran Mike Brown first. We'll work our way through that group. And then we'll go to the right side of the bracket. So Ryan Dungey, certainly one of the surprises to see him come out of retirement. He has not raced a race since announcing the end of his professional career last May. As for Mike Brown, uh, he will never retire ever. One of your rivals from way back in the day. Mike Brown will race anytime, any place, anywhere. And he's facing off with the number three against Dungey. And Dungey out to the early lead. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one for Brownie. The guy's been around a long time. An absolute legend. He's been around so long that two strokes have become come cool again. Yes. That's how long he's been around. Little mistake there from Brownie. You see Dunge off to a great start. Just a couple bike lengths. Brown is 47 years old and can still rip it. And he's keeping Dungey within sight. But man, to hear a factory prepare two-stroke like that again, that bike sounds great. Well, I think that factory two-stroke KTM sounds better than it ever has. You hear the crowd. It's the first time they're coming through. Dungey with the lead. Brownie still in there. This is the whoop section. Ah, oh, just beautiful to hear the two-strokes of the whoops. Dungey takes the win. Brown comes up behind him. And it is a best two out of three in Red Bull straight rhythm. So Brown will have another chance to come back and try to force a third race with Dungey. Next up, Cedric Subaras. That is the Frenchman. He is on a Suzuki. And he'll be going against Ryan Sipes. Sipes has become Mr. All-Rounder. He's won Supercross races. He's won motocross racers. He's won off-road races. He won a oh, flat yeah. track race this year. He can still get it done on a Supercross type track. Well, don't forget about Super Ass, a, a former French Supercross champion. He knows how to do it as well. This is going to be really interesting. All wheel spin from both riders. Sipes on the 264, the rider's right. Super Ass in yellow. 
little oh. extra sights, but he overjumped it. Zubaraz comes back. That's so hard to, to, at those speed checks to break without sliding up the face and overjumping. You see, once again, little step up. All oh, these guys are neck and neck. Oh, a little mistake from Sykes again. Oh. Zubaraz, maybe a half a bike like Lee. We're only halfway through the course right here. Yep, this is the halfway tunnel jump, as they call it, right here. This is where it gets interesting. If you make a mistake in this next rhythm, it could change things. Plus, the whoop section gets tough. Sykes does it different. They end up the same. Now it's close. Sykes is going to need the whoops to come back on Subaros. The Frenchman leads him to the checkered flag and takes the first round. Subaros kept a great run through the whoops there. Sykes thought he had a chance, got close, but... Remember, it's two out of three, so Sipes will have another chance at Subaros. Our next bracket, it is Ryan Villapoto against Christophe Porcel. This one goes way, way back. Oh, Porcel, also say. a retired Frenchman. But going back about a dozen years ago, these two were considered maybe the future of the sport. Former teammates came down to the championship. I remember in 2007, these guys hung it out every race for the end. I moved up to 450s. I was teammates with Villapoto. It's going to be interesting. Yep. Marcel on 377, Villapoto on his customary number two, and it is wheel to wheel right now. Maybe a slight edge to Villapoto, but the crafty Frenchman is known for having tricks up his sleeve. Let's see if he can find one. This is where Porcel struggled a little bit early in practice off of this jump. Watch this rhythm. He was battling to get off this table right here. He gets it. That's important for him. He's still in the mix. This is going to be interesting. All right, so Porcel has stepped up the game, but he's got to go even faster because Villapoto has about a bike length on him. He's giving him a heck of a run, though. Oh, you can hear the crowd coming in front of the crowd. It is so close. Oh, mistake. Oh, and Porcel. Yeah, change the game for Porcel. A mistake in the tabletops, and Villapoto's free to go and win. Porcel had it all the way till the end there. He pulled off the track. He's actually now pushing his bike. Oh, maybe there's a problem with the machine. Yeah, we can see it off camera. Sorry, folks, but we're just seeing Porcel. You'll see it now. He's just pushing his bike. Let's see what happens to Porcel here in the yellow gear. Well, was it a mistake? Was oh, bike mechanical. Out. Yes, that looked like a mechanical. You see the bike died there. I think you nailed it, Jason. Watch, watch the bike just lose power right there. You see his head bob. It obviously had a bog or something. Kate, what do you have on the 377? Before this event, we knew that Porcel was actually struggling with the setup of this bike and also the 125. He said the real issue is when the temperature drops seven degrees one way or the other the issues with the setup become different. And he said already when it was hot, they were having a hard time to find the right setup. And if there's a, if there's a crash, it would be even more of an issue. And that is exactly what we saw here tonight. Yeah, you can expand on that, Grant. These two strokes, the old carburetors, they don't have electronic control. So when the temperature and the atmosphere changes, the bikes run a lot differently. Josh Tran, by the way, locked in against Kyle Partridge. Well, these bikes don't require chaining. And if you don't get it right, well, if you get it right, it's good. But when the tech drops more than seven degrees, guess what? You have those issues. JG off to a great start, just ahead of one of his buddies, Kyle Partridge. Partridge, another rider that is basically in retirement, but he has been very successful in this race in past years, and look, he wow. wrestles the lead away from Grant. But watch this. I'm telling you, Josh Grant has a secret weapon off the halfway point. Will he pull it out right now? We saw him in qualifying doing it. Watch. He might need it here because Partridge is holding him at bay. Yeah, it's right off this jump. Will he go double, triple? No. He didn't do it. No, he didn't. He stayed Partridge in the lead. And we're heading to the whoops. And Partridge is very good through there. He's one of the tallest riders in the field. Grant's going to try to hold it. Wheel to wheel. And I that think, was too close. Oh, man, I think Grant might have gotten him. He did by four hundreds. Partridge giving him all he can handle. Partridge has always been good at Red Bull straight rhythm. As I mentioned, he's one of the taller riders. He can use that leverage. And man, for Grant, who was pegged as maybe one of the favorites coming in here, that was a tough one. We mentioned Mike Brown. It's 49. My bad. I thought it's 47. Jeez. There are 14 riders in today's field who were not born when Brown turned pro in 1990. And the company Red Bull was only around three years when Brown turned pro. Yeah, I think it was a little mistake. The Brownie's not quite 49 yet. He's uh, uh, 47, but still looking healthy and strong, riding against the Dunge. Well, that's the only problem. He's really good, but he's going against the rider who's number one in qualifying. Who's, who's <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> Fresh of retirement. I think Dungey looks about as hungry as I've seen him in a long time. And I'm telling you, as a professional, even if I was still racing pro, I'd be like, I'm worried about this guy. He looks really good. I'm telling you with that Red Bull factory KTM behind him.
they've looked really strong. And he said Ryan Morris's secret weapon helped him test on this bike. Morris will be in competition as well on the other side of the 250 bracket. Wow, Dungey rolling through the rollers early on this track and getting an edge on Brown. Brown, he's still in it though. If Dunge makes a mistake, things can change. Dungey very calculated, so you usually don't expect that. But when guys are trying to save a little bit of time, they make those mistakes. I think Dungey just knowing that he's probably got a little bit of speed over Mike Brown, he doesn't have to scrub everything looking clean. But you gotta say for Mike Brown, in his late 40s, no matter what his age is, <laughs> let's just say in his late 40s, this is phenomenal what the guy's still doing. Hanging with Ryan Dungey, but not quite enough. Dungey wins his second runoff with Brown, and he will advance to the next round of competition. Brown is eliminated. Just another in a long, long line of events that Mike Brown has entered and put in a good, strong showing. Now we go back to Sykes Impressive. versus Subaros. Oh, oh. Another fun one. This one's great. This is, th won the previous these run. are veterans in, the, in both terms. Different sides of the Atlantic. Subaros, a Frenchman, strong, uh, had good results in Supercross over there. Former Supercross champion, Ryan Sipes, as you mentioned earlier. Nowadays, he's kind of Mr. All-Round. If it's got a throttle and two wheels, it's probably going to do well. Sipes was quick, but Subaros, about a third into the track, was able to get the edge on him. Sipes made two minor mistakes, and he could not make up for it. So Subaros, if he wins this one, will eliminate Sipes two to nothing. Sipes has to win this, or he's out of Red Bull straight rhythm here in the 250 class. I can hear my Kentucky fans out there getting fired up right now mm -hmm. for their boy. Come on, Sipes. We're rooting for Super Ass as well, but we want to see these two vets keep it. We want to see a third round, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, smoke of the tire. Yeah, Sykes really hard out of the hole, but Super Ass comes right back side by side and it hit the first speed check. And now the first really difficult rhythm lane. Sykes looks clean through there. Yeah, double, triple, triple for both of them. Double out. Another little step up. Got to land. This is where it's important on these bikes. Soak it up on the table. On, on, off. Keeping the drive going forward, Super Ass. You saw him do a little wheel tap. This is so close. Little edge to the Frenchman right now. Sipes trying to come back, and he does. A nice scrub by Sipes. He scrubbed that really good. Now they're almost side by side. Super Ass, maybe with a half bike length lead, but Sipes can't he show his here. will in the, in the whoops. Here He's it is. He's got to make it happen. Sipes running out of time in real estate. It's over. Super Ass takes it. Two close runs, and you can see the emotion. The 201 pumped. He, he knew that was, that was a tough one. It's not going to get any easier as we're going to have a look at this is where it gets interesting. Coming up, see there, Sipes just came up a little short on that jump. I think he got too hard on the brakes. He's half a bike length behind. Then they come over this one more speed check. He had to nail these whoops, but Subaras was just as good. See that? Neck and neck. Nothing changed. Subaras. Two to nothing eliminates Sipes, who is actually the fastest rider in qualifying on a two-stroke at this race last year. And I think we can see how much everyone has stepped up their two-stroke game. Now they've had a year to study it and think about it. And that includes Ryan Villapoto here. Not afraid to boast. He put it out on Instagram. He said, I think my bike looks and performs better than the one I was on last year. And oh, he's going to put that thing to the test. He's on a Yamaha, and, and, and Yamaha made bikes further into the future than uh, the Kawasaki, so. Yeah, he still continue to produce a YZ250 exactly. two-stroke, yes. Which means development continues. Now we wait on Porcel, who we saw had the bike problem and head back to the pit area when he did not complete the run against Filippoto. I don't know if the 377 is going to be able to compete in this one. If that is the case, they'll make Villapoto do the run anyway to officially move into the next round. And then it'll be Grant and Partridge who had the closest race of early stages of competition up after this. And yes, it appears to be a solo run for Villapoto. So scratch for sell from competition in the 250 class. He is also entered on the 125. Well, I thought RV was going to have a little parade lap or another practice lap, but uh, he's sending a message right yeah. now. He's like, I would have won this either way. Gonna love it. Love seeing the riders when they say that they get a little burnt out in professional motocross racing, and then a year or two later they're like, I just love coming out and riding a bike in front of the fans. So 
This is what he's doing. RV just having a great time. That bike and setup is on point. The crowd loving it. And they're going to get more of it because Porcel is out and officially going to the next round is Villapoto and Kate has A disappointing Porcel. round for Christoph Purcell. But you know what? The good news is, is you figured a few things out, but you have another run to go. What actually happened in that heat? Yeah, I mean, uh, the bike, uh, we struggle all day, but we finally got a good setup on the qualifying, so I felt pretty good. And uh, we had some bugging on the bike, and we fixed that. But uh, then I was riding with Alvi and uh, we had a good battle. Uh, I felt very, very comfortable, and uh, you know it's good to race uh, against RV again. We we raced ten years ago, so I felt felt very good. But the bike at the end of the the straight it kind of it seized, so it, everything was blocked off in the in the motor, and we broke the motor, so we're done for the night. And what does that mindset do for you now that you have to get back on the bike for 125? Uh, 125 is a two-stroke again, so you know we've been playing with jetting and all the all the stuff in the cab. So hopefully the bike should be good. I'm just a little scared that I don't want to break another motor. I, I got lucky on this one. I almost crashed, and uh, and I'm fine. So as long as I'm okay and I'm healthy, it's it's good. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'd like to do good on the 125. I'll try my best, and hopefully everything goes well. We're glad you're okay for sure, gentlemen. How difficult is it for these riders having to get back on that bike? My goodness. Well, if you're going to ask me, I'm going to tell you, I think it's it, it's pretty difficult because just like Porcel said, things can happen. Uh, Jennings wrong bike seizures. Luckily, it didn't happen at the worst time. Now we're back. JG and Partridge, two very talented riders. And Partridge in the 144 led the majority of the first race between them. It was only at the very final stretch of the whoops that Grant was able to pull it out. Little edge for the 33 of Grant right now. Yeah, he's got a little bit over Partridge, but let's remember, we've seen the left lane, most of the riders choosing that in practice, so we feel like that's their most comfortable lane. Look at Partridge, he was a little further behind, now he's right in the mix. Might need a mistake from Grant to get close enough to go ahead of him, though. Here we go. This rhythm lane is where Grant has something he can use if he needs it. Doesn't need it right now because he has the lead over Partridge. Final speed check. Cheers from the crowd. Woots. Checkers. Josh Grant moving on to the next round, and Partridge is eliminated. Yeah, JG just a little too strong. Partridge, a very talented rider, hasn't raced professionally in many, many years, but you can tell the guy still knows how to get it done, but JG a little too strong right there. And that's one of the hooks of this event. The riding skills are one thing, but the fitness element, not as important when you're only running for 45 seconds, so it's great for a rider like Partridge to be able to compete. Well, at least we've got the left side figured out, right? Dungey will go against Subaros in round two. Villapoto will go against Josh Grant. That oh. is going to be a battle. That is the left side of our bracket in the 250 division, but we still have an entire half of the field that is yet to race, so let's get to that. This is a popular privateer on the AMA circuit, Johnny Del Durda, right here in Southern California based. So he will be on the uh, 275. Let's send it down to Tino with Ryan Dungey. Dungey has never raced a 252 stroke before tonight, but you don't look like it at all. Uh, how long did it take you to figure out this track? Uh, a little bit. Um, it's two strokes. It takes a lot of a uh, couple changes. Things are faster, stiffen it up. Open the rebound up. The jetting is a big uh, play. I you hear a lot of guys uh, working on the jetting, but uh, Team Rebel KTM guys got it good. Carlos, my mechanic, Jim, everybody got it feeling good. So uh, big thanks to them. And it's still early, but how does it feel just to be competitive? Well, that's the thing. It's, um, you know, they, they groom the track. You don't want to push it too hard because there could be a wet spot. So you just got to play it patient, but slowly pick up the pace as we get into this bracket. And uh, yeah, just give it our best. That's all we can do. Thanks so much. Thank you, Tina. As the sun sets here in Pomona, I am joined by the one and only, the legend, Ronnie Mack. Thank you for stopping by, sir. I know that your your right hand has been cramping from just signing autographs all day. What's it like when Ronnie Mack comes to Pomona, the Fairplex, and the fans, they just come for you? Hey, you know, it's good to be out here hanging out with the fans, because that's what we're here to do, right? It's just you know, have a good time with the fans. 
do the things we want to do as a racer and just impress them. But at the end of the day, I'm a little bit upset about True. how the racing has gone because at the end of the day, I didn't know qualifying and practice was the same thing. <laughs> and I mean, to be honest, I was the odds on fastest guy last year. Right. You know, if it wasn't for, you know, a little bit of mistake and it wasn't even my fault. True. I would have won the whole thing. True. And that's the whole thing that makes me upset is the simple fact that I thought I was seated in. So practice, you know, practice is for girls. At the end of the day, like, nobody wants to go out there and practice. Pra I I'm a racer. Right. You, you and, you know, I didn't go out there and for practice, so they didn't let me race. All right. Well, you heard it first. Ronnie Mack doesn't believe in practice. We'll get back to race and check back in with Ronnie later on. I, I think I'm the luckiest man here. Yeah, I almost fear we'll see if we check in with Ronnie a little bit later on. <laughs> Always keeps us guessing. So we'll go to the next part of the bracket. It will not include Ronnie Mack, who is not competing tonight. He saw Johnny Del Durda in the gate. Now he's being met up with Jordan Smith, who will be on the number 28, second fastest in qualifying in the 250 division. So there is Smith. Smith and Shane McElrath, who you'll see in a moment also, they are full-time factory riders for Troy Lee Designs, Red Bull, KTM. They're the only two riders who will be full-time factory racers in 2019 who are in this field. So obviously Smith and McElrath are two of the favorites. Let's see what the privateer, Joe Durda, can do, and he's keeping Smith honest. Yeah, now he's right there, but Jordan Smith looked really good in qualifying. I would say he was my standout surprise as how good he was. Very smooth as you watch him. Doesn't move around along that bike, just very efficient. And starting to pull away, Joe Durda didn't get one of the triples early in the run, and that has allowed Smith to start pulling away. It was pretty cool. Smith actually called the team and said, hey, what about straight rhythm? They're like, oh, you want to do it? He's like, yeah. They expected uh, McElrath to compete because he's actually won in the 254 stroke class the last two years. But Smith wants another shot at it, and he gets it, and he beats Joe Durda here in their first run. They'll be back for another in a few minutes because it is the best two out of three that advance to the next round. Austin Palatelli, another privateer, pulling in. And this is Cameron McAdoo on the Popamex back Yamaha. This was supposed to be Alex Ray. Ray got hurt last week at Monster Cup, so Cameron McAdoo got the call. He's never raced a Yamaha. He's never raced a 252 stroke. Didn't get on either one until early this week. And he's a Red Bull straight rhythm, going to give it a shot on the 44. He looked good on it early and gates down. They're side by side, but McAdoo with a half bike length lead, I'm telling you, he's looked good in practice and qualifying. Very comfortable on that 250 Yamaha with the pump mix backing. But look at this, Palatelli coming right back. Now, Palatelli is known for being a very talented rider, and he's showing it right now. Great battle between the 99 and the 44. Pulling away a bit now is McAdoo. Palatelli, actually a kid that I've been around a little bit as an amateur. He knows how to ride a bike. Halfway, they're right there in it. Look at that. Palatelli right back in. Yes, yeah, he kept it low of that jump. That brought him right back in the mix. It's going to come down to the whoops, Weech. And this is what the fans want to see. It's right in front of the grand stand. Who's back to the whoops? How oh, close was that? McAdoo is going to get it. Absolute showdown right to the line. It came down to three hundredths of a second. Well, we're up here in the booth. We can almost see the naked line. I mean, the, you know, with our naked eye, the finish line. And that was so close. Watch this. Politelli just comes back right at the yeah. end. Yes, McAdoo had a little Watch. gap going into the loops, but... Ooh. Oh, he caught it. So McAdoo is going to get it by the slimmest of margins. They will race again. I love the sound of this electric bike. What it sounds sound so good. What sound? So yeah, yes, exactly. the one no stroke in the field against the two stroke, Darren Durham on the Alta redshift against McElrath. Now, by the way, there was some news this week that Alta has at least come to a hiatus as far as producing motorcycles. They might be back as a company, but right now we're not sure what the future of that company is. But I talked to Durham. He had a bike and parts ready. They said, yeah, you can keep racing. So let's see how the electric bike does against McElrath, who has always been strong at this event, but normally in past years on a 254 stroke, now on a 252 stroke. It is 
quite remarkable if you're here in person because you hear the one bike, it sounds amazing, and then you literally do not hear the other bike. It just looks like someone's freewheeling their way <laughs> over all these jumps. But it's trippy the first time you hear it, but it is quite remarkable. You've got to remember the electric bike, no gears, no clutch. I have ridden one. It, it, it really changes how you ride a bike. But look at McElrath. McElrath got a little bit close to the white line. And that would be an instant loss of the round. So they got to be careful. Don't hit the white line in the middle. But he does hold off Durham, who will be back in the next one. Now here is your defending champ. Yes, make no mistake about it. Stank dog, Jared Steinke, won this in the two-stroke class last year. He has to go against Ryan Morris, former pro racer, now a full-time development rider with KTM. Morris did race this event last year. And Morris is no slouch off the couch. Trust me on that one. Stank dog is a legend in it. He's got a huge fan following. This is going to be interesting. Off the couch, off the two-stroke. Yeah, hands full right now for Stank Dog against Morris. Woo! Morris jumped all the way to the uh, face of that jump. I cannot believe he pulled that out. I'm telling you, Ryan Morris is probably the most underrated rider in this field. But he knows how to ride. Almost won the East Coast Championship. Ben Townley edged him due to a little bit of bad luck one year, you could say. But Stank Dog with the number one defending champ. He's got his hands full. Morris just flawless right now. Yeah, what a run from Mo. Ryan Morris. And he's got Stank Dog covered in their first run. They have stepped up the game. We are seeing, again, Sipes, fastest in qualifying a year ago, eliminated in round one. Stank Dog won this race a year ago. He's already down 0-1 in the first round. So everyone has improved on the two strokes going into 2018. We're back into the top of this bracket. Jel Durda against Jordan Smith. They slip lanes. If you start out on the right side of the next lane, you have to move to the left and vice versa. Uh. Well, for Johnny, the good news is he's on the, what I would consider maybe at the moment just a slightly better lane. Oh, he's spun off the gate. And a little advantage then for Jordan Smith in the 28. Jel Durda trying to come back on him. First speed check and into the first real technical rhythm section right here. Yeah, on the 250s, double, triple, triple, double. See a yeah. little case there from Smitty, so is that going to hurt him? It did. It allowed Jel Durda to pull back up. Jel Durda also got through the triple, triple, which he didn't do in the first run, so he's right there. Yes, he is. Probably a bike length behind. Now they're about to hit the halfway point. Two opportunities. If you nail this section coming up, you can gain some time. But I think they're going to do the same rhythm. Oh, yeah, Jel Durda's out of this one. So Jordan Smith, very fast every time he's been on this course. And just as fast for his time to go racing, he eliminates Jel Durda two to nothing. And we'll go on to the next round. So that will bring us back to the line. This is, this is a, a really good one. It was so close when they battled the first time. Palatelli versus McAdoo. McAdoo was just able to edge him. Palatelli needs to beat him in this one or he is eliminated. McAdoo lightning quick through the first couple of jumps and builds an early lead. Uh, he's got it over Palatelli at the moment, but it's still too close to call this early in the race. One little bobble will change things. Whoa. Oh, Palatelli missed that triple. That really hurt him as well. He's going to really... He needs McAdoo to make a big mistake in order to get back in this one. Well, McAdoo made one, but not nearly as big as the one Palatelli had. So it's a good lead for the 44 right now. At the halfway point. Just don't mess a section up. You can see McAdoo, very cool, calm and collected. He, he's looked good on that bike. For a youngster, I'm very impressed, and he gets it done. So McAdoo eliminates Palatelli. Palatelli made it awfully close the first time they raced. McAdoo a little bit stronger this time. Okay, we've been talking about that Made in America Alta electric bike, Kate, with an update on Darren Durham. Darren Durham uh, right now 1-0 here this evening, although he is on that electric bike, and he said it took him a while to get used to not having a clutch or shifter. We talked about the advantages and disadvantages on that electric bike. He said, well, of course, the two strokes te technically make more power, but I don't have to shift. Either way, I haven't ridden a bike much at all lately, so I'm sure right now he's feeling with one under his belt. Got to be a happy man. 
Yeah, he kept it interesting, no doubt about it. Durham against Shane McElrath, who has won this race several times in our 254 stroke class. So he is unfortunately up against one of the big hitters. Let's see how he can do. The Alta Motorcycle made in the United States. It's a Silicon Valley startup, essentially. They got into motorcycles. Why? Because they believe this is the best proving ground for electric technology anywhere. And it's up to Durham to try to take down the two-stroke. Well, you got to give them some credit. I mean, it's quite remarkable without gears or a clutch that they can be as competitive, or should I say, nearly as competitive as the top guys. Durham, ton of talent. You see Josh Hill ride that bike well. And I'm telling you, it takes a special rider to ride a bike like that as fast as they are. But when you come against McElrath, then I feel like he's right in his wheelhouse right now. Yeah, McElrath, the guy who's won almost half a dozen 250 Supercross races over the last two years. Durham retired from full-time competition several years ago, and as he mentioned, the cake is not riding much coming into this event. He had a good time doing it in the Alta, but that time is over because McElrath has eliminated him two to nothing. And a high five from Durham is always a guy that has a good time at the races. And they'll probably continue to have a good time in the pit. Oh, absolutely. Night. The guy's got tons of talent. Speaking of talent, these two riders have not forgotten it. Ryan Morris, a legend from motocross years ago. In fact, he was my uh, practice partner years ago when we were coming through this rhythm. Garrett Stanky, defending champ. He is on the line. He's got to win this. And you can see Stank Dog pushing a lot harder this time. He knows it's all on the line. He's got to beat Morris to stave off elimination. No champ ever wants to go out in the first round. And that's what he's facing right now. Stank. Nice job. Stank got the wheels down to the ground at the top of that jump. Uh, we approach the halfway point. This is where it gets interesting. They are close. Little check here. They're going to go over a little double. Triple step up. They're going to whip it out for the fans. Oh. Oh, it's getting nervous. Time pressure is on Stank Dog. He's got to pull something out. Whoop section is coming up. Can he get back to Morris? Morris. Different jumping rhythms there. Oh, it's going to be down to this. Morris has got to drive. Here it is. Morris. Oh, oh. Stank Dog crashes, giving it everything he had right down to the line. And it's over in the 250 class for last year's champ. We hope he's okay. He, I think he just knocked himself pretty good. I think Stank Dog's all right. He's he went for it. The yeah. front wheel missed the whoop, but he knew it was all on the line. We're going to have a look at the replay. This was a matter of just going for it. You hear the crowd erupting. Stank Dog back on his feet. Watch the front wheel. Oh, that was the rear wheel. And then land in that transition Woo! when the suspension compressed. I did not see it washed out. angle. Yeah, he did a complete flip right here. The jumping rhythms a little bit different there at the end. Morris, you see, yeah, barely able to get the bike back down on the ground in time. Well, this is where they had that step up and then watch Stanky was already getting a little little wow. slideways <laughs> and then uh, but he was committed. He went for it. He knew he had to go for it. He went for it in the whoops. And that's what happens. Watch. Watch the rear end go sideways. And then once it kicks, it rebounds. Lack of traction. Oh. As bad as it may have looked, he got off pretty good. And that's what it takes when you're uh, when well, you're a top rider. You, you, you actually have to learn over time how to dismount. Now, Stank Dog is entered in the 125 class. So he is eliminated here. But we hope he's OK so he can come back and at least race the 125 a little later in the evening, being attended to by the trackside medics right now. Yeah, and our first shot. He may shot, have got a shoulder see. a little okay. bit. I think that maybe that's a little bit. I think I think he's fine. I think he's probably just a little shook up. You know, as a rider, if, 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 if as we say, if you've got a broken chicken wing, then, uh, you know, it's a little hard to just bounce up and grab your bike and ride off. And right there in front of the fans who erupted when he first got to his feet. This is what the riders say is taking inventory to try to see if everything feels right. So our first round is complete. We'll have Ryan Dungey against Cedric Subaras, Ryan Villapoto against Josh Grant in round two, Jordan Smith against McAdoo, McElrath against Morris. Let's send it down to Tina. And Jordan Smith is no stranger to <laughs> Red Bull straight rhythm. You couldn't compete last year because of an injury. What's it like to be back now and also on a two stroke? Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Troy got us this uh, sweet one one off gear, painted us up some really cool helmets, brought back the fin like the 90s and even got the, the little jingle balls here like like the King used to have. So it's pretty cool and it's a fun, fun atmosphere for sure. Yeah, and that's been part of the fun is like seeing all the retro come back. Uh, what's your take on that? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's really cool. You know, I didn't really grow up in the, the two-stroke era. Like, I was never at the races that much during that era. So uh, it's pretty cool to kind of get a, a little flashback and see what it was all about. Yeah, that's part of the fun, guys. Yeah, it's uh, a guy born in 1996, so yeah, he's actually younger than a lot of the trends that we're talking about here. There is Stank taking a ride. We'll see if he's okay and if he can return for the 125 class. It'll be coming up here on Red Bull TV. It's Straight Rhythm for Pomona, California. Troy Lee definitely had a grip on the, the custom painted helmets, that's for sure. The 90s, it was custom through and through. I could never afford a custom painted helmet. That's how you identified your personality. You know, you think of McGrath because he had the best of what Troy Lee could, could paint up. He just, he let me always push the envelope. I'd tell him I want to do 10 things to it, and he's like, man, go for it. But I remember thinking it'd gone too far when Jeremy McGrath showed up in Anaheim wearing a lampshade. Hmm. So like for 10 or 11 years straight, I wore a brand new helmet at, at Anaheim with a crazy idea on it, $100 bills. It was like it had tassels around it, dingleberries, fins. But you know, he's Jeremy McGrath. He could get away with anything. It's been fun looking at these pieces, remembering what yeah. motocross culture was like in the 90s, right there talking about the extravagance of the helmets. Mike Brown, you won your first race in 1994. No doubt you remember uh, the culture and, and, and something like helmets. <laughs> oh, well, for sure. Back, back to what they were talking about earlier, everybody had painted helmets on. You recognize the people by what their helmet style was, and uh, that was a big deal back then. Now it's everybody wants you to wear the corporate helmet, and it's a lot different now. So uh, bringing this back, this race, bringing back a lot of memories you know like you say the helmets the smell the gas the whole thing is uh, a good good time how was it for you now you got a, a, a really tough draw in, in getting Dungey off the couch but yeah. regardless that was a strong strong race you were right there yeah it was good you know I've been today it was to go up against him anybody you put anybody up against him it's gonna be a tough tough battle for him but uh, it was good to be with him you know he's retired now and I am too I still do it here and there like he does but it was tough, you know, like I struggled a lot today with my bike set up, just getting it uh, jetting right, but still it's, uh, it was an honor to be out there with him on the same track and uh, to be here at 46 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we make a big deal about your, your age being 46, 47 years old. What is it that still motivates you when you get the opportunity to come out against these kids? What is it about this sport that still keeps you young and wanting to be out there and uh, see what you got? I think that's where I keep riding and keep involved in the sport, keep trying to change my style to the young kids and uh, just riding and keeping the training up and being out on the track. You know, a lot of these guys that retire, like Dungy, he still was training and riding here and there, but you don't lose it that quick. It's just, you know, the training side of it's what you lose the worst. So it's, uh, for me, I've just kept at it from day one when I stopped doing all the series. And uh, I think that's the main thing. Just don't stop cold turkey and yeah. just keep at it. And you can apply that to life. Inspired by your quarterfinal performance last year, inspired tonight. Great to have you stop by. We're going to go to Kate right now, Thanks. who's with AJ and Rensland. AJ was saying that he's basically scared the whole time he's out there, but there's one section that he found today that other riders are doing, and you're really having to focus on it. Talk us through that. Yeah, I was super confident on the whole track, um, and they actually jumped it with two laps to go in practice, and I didn't see it. So it kind of put me on the spot, um, and now I have to go jump it in this bracket race. So it's scary, but this is how the sport is, and you have to get, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, really is what it is. That's a really good way to put it, but you are on a bike that you have good vibes from and it's a tribute bike and we're giving it up to Bubba this is one that is so special if we take a look at the bike and getting nitty-gritty why do you feel confident on a bike like this even though it's a 125 I grew up on Kawasaki's my whole life and even though it's a 2004 it's 14 years old which is crazy to say every nick and cranny of this but I mean this is a it's a factory motorcycle and I've never ridden a factory bike so it's about a $30,000 KX125, and for an 04, it's as good as it can get. And he's not the only one who's taking it back to the 90s with us. We wish you the best out there, AJ. Good luck on that section. But also a guy who's giving us a little tribute to the 90s as well is Luke Rensland. Check his bike out. This is one that a lot of eyeballs have been on and a lot of conversations, especially socially. How much fun has it been kind of attaching yourself to the 91 here? Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, it was a lot of work, I'll be honest, to uh, get the bike gear the helmet, everything put together, but um, 
and also to get everything transported 2,500 miles. But it's uh, it's been well worth the the effort just to see everyone enjoy it. Um, you know, I, I, I've heard from a million people just flashbacks back to 1991. So it's cool to uh, give a little something back to the King and uh, give something back to the uh, the original fans of Moto. So i uh, going to try to go out there, put in a solid result, and, uh, you know, do it like the King would do it. <laughs> do it like the King would do it. Jason, I think a lot of these guys out here would like to do it like the King would do it, huh? Well, the guy wrenching on that bike would know. The mechanic for Jeremy McGrath in 1991 is the mechanic for Luke Rensland tonight, our buddy Skip Norfolk. So that is an awesome connection to back in the day. Let's just update you. This is our bracket now as we move to the 125 class. Carson Brown will be our top qualifier. He will go against Colton Egg. Chase Marquier against Porcel, who's back on his 125 now. Surratt versus Catanzaro. And Rensland will take on Stank Dog if Stank Dog can get back at it. So let's go to the 125s and see how different it is. Well, I'll tell you one thing that's going to be a lot more difficult is just doubling any of these jumps on a 125 a lot harder. You see Brown, that's Carson Brown. Great start. Oh, he triple triples. Wow. Look at the difference that makes on these 125s. That's like five bike lengths worth. That's difficult. We did not see anyone really do that very consistently. I think Rensland hit it a few times in practice, but Brown showing why he was the fastest in qualifying, uncorking the two triples early in the run and pulling away. Colton Egg on a 2003 Honda CR125, but he's got to make up some ground quickly. Yeah, well, a little mistake there. That, that could be his opening. Yep. All dunk off the line. That was close, but I think... Carson Brown, yeah, yeah, he's going to hold on, GL. He's got it. Well, it wasn't a question of was he going to actually win. It's, like you said, if you cross that solid white line, it really changes things. And... Uh, you know, someone asked earlier why I wasn't out there racing it's Mike Brown, who's a lot older, still doing it. I said, they put a white line, so I can't even cross over and bang bars if I wanted to. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah, we can't have you and Brown on a track if you can't touch each other. That just wouldn't be right. So now it's Marquier against Porcel. We told the story earlier. Porcel had bike problems on his 250, was out early. But now he's back on the 125. Well, I'm sure for some of the old school, meaning people that have watched Supercross for over 10 years, I'm sure there's a part of them would like to see the crafty Frenchman progress. Christophe Porcel, tons of talent, doesn't race professionally anymore, lives in France, does a lot of testing for the GP teams, so he still rides Moto and Supercross. This is close. Rides well enough to actually take the lead back from Marquier, who had the edge earlier. Marquier, out of Oklahoma, trying to come back. That was a massive scrap for Porcel. You see them, they came up a little short there, now side by side. Marquier got over that table, that'll give him a little advantage. Two to big jump rhythms. So Marquier out front. It's gonna Porcel's come down the gonna, Yeah, he's gonna have to make a big run, GL. No, Marquier, he's got him. <laughs> that was interesting. I thought Porcel could have got the drive down that last speed check and carried that momentum through the whoops. He may have got it, but wow, what a great race. That was a good back and forth battle. Yeah, they really exchanged it three or four times. He was leading. There's a little mistake from Porcel. That was that was good there, but he lost a little drive, and that's where Marquier came up, and this way it got interesting. Yeah, set of tabletops here. There, he scrubbed that really good. Porcel not quite as clean. And Marquier able to get the edge. So they'll be back for a second run. That was Marquier and Porcel. Catanzaro will go against Ryan Surratt. Surratt is on a TM. Made in Italy? Yes. Yeah, yep. Made in Italy. Yep. We don't see those much. They're not uh, homologated under the AMA production rules to be able to race Supercross or Motocross, but it's anything goes so basically here. He's like, he, basically, he's Jason Lawrence. He's not homologated by AMA no. or FIM, but Clearly. he's still here to race. <laughs> well, he's even got the 338 on the bike, which was uh, the legendary Jason Lawrence's old number. So there is Surratt, turned pro and a the hair. years ago. Yeah. 21 years old, out of California, second generation rider. Willie Surratt is dad, a uh, former factory Suzuki rider and Supercross champion. And he makes one of four Ryans tonight racing. <laughs> I say Jay Catanzaro, but boy, does that look like a dead ringer for James Bubba Stewart. I was about to say, Stewie with the whole shot. <laughs> James Bubba Stewart. Now I'm kidding. The double, triple, 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 triple. He nailed yeah, it. it works. He got both of them. So Catanzaro the, with a bit of an edge. But Surratt right there with him, even though AJ was flawless in that first section. Surratt looks good. He struck that jump. Not able to close. 
goes in and out. So halfway through, edge to Conzaro, but here comes Surratt with the scrubbing, coming back on him. That was beautiful from Surratt Day. He brought himself right in the mix. Look at this, Arnold, they're gonna come. One more speed check, it's into the whoops. Side by side of the whoops. Who's got the speed to take it? It's gonna be Surratt, I got right on the back fender to try to find a little extra traction, but Surratt gets it. By five tenths of a second, Cotton Zorro had the lead for the majority of that run. Oh, once again, it's one of those races where you think, okay, it's looking good, I got it, and then uh, it, it just changed halfway through. Surratt never gave up. He was in there. AJ probably a little bit shocked. He, he's been strong all day long, and you see the crowd right when they come to the end. You could hear them. Look at AJ up that back. Look at the real wheel. He, can. he yeah. wheelied up to that finish line. <laughs> I mean... I'd love to actually know exactly, I mean, they put the transponder pretty much behind the handlebar by the triple clamp. But mm -hmm. between the wheelies and the way they do it, I kid That's you true. not, it, it, I think it affects the finish line time by a hundredth or a thousandth every now and then. I would not be surprised. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing, I think, four different runs so far come down to hundredths of a second. Our next race will be Stank Dog if he's able to get going against Luke Rensland. But remember, Stank Dog had that big crash at the end of his 250 round. Well, while we wait for Stank Dog to show up, there's one thing I want to mention that's critical on this track. Jumping triples and doubles are important, but staying low is crucial. He has a good shot of Smitty, Jordan Smith. You see what he's doing right there, turning the handlebars. That's not for show or a turn down. What these guys are doing it's when they hit a jump. You got to remember, I can't use my hands on TV right now because you can't see them. But when the suspension compresses, it wants to rebound, meaning like a pogo stick, it wants to shoot you back up towards the moon or the sun. But when you turn down the bike, the suspension dissipates to the side. In other words, it doesn't shove you up. It leaves you, so you're good. But right now, we're just getting word that our defending champion, Jared Steinke, is out for this event, Jason Wagon. Yeah, so it's gonna be Chance Fullerton taking his place. And remember, this is the crash from about 10 minutes earlier, Steinke on the number one. Yeah, and he just got through the whoops. He went for it. it, it just what you expect from Jared Steinke, going for it. He went down, you could tell, a little shook up. Looks like he, he I think he hurt his shoulder when he went down, he saw it hit the ground. And a lot of these riders are carrying injuries, so good chance for chance for it <laughs> to get in. Off-road rider, awesome to see him on the beta, representing, like we said, riders from all walks of life. Yeah, it's an off-road rider and a brand of bike, the beta. That is more based on off-road type riding. Their real specialty is trials bikes. But he's coming against off racer. Yo, the awesome. No one's gonna beat the 91 McGrath, are they? Nice. Oh, are they? It's the King's bike. Let's see what Fullerton can do. He's in the red gear. The blue and white machine is Luke Renslin. Renslin, a veteran of motocross and supercross, had a top three finish, a podium this year at Indianapolis. So he knows how to ride, and he's making that 125, 125 look good. Well, wow, when you go double, triple, triple through that rhythm on a 125, that is really going to set you apart. Like that double and that jump right there on a 125, they're not really rolling off. They're hitting it wide open. All of a sudden, jumps that are easy for 450 are super tough. Or certain jumps are not even, you don't even think about them. Get through the whoops and get it done. And there it is. Luke Renslin takes his first run against against Chance Fullerton. So that means Crab will get another shot to look at that awesome Jeremy McGrath looking bike. Let's try to get an update on Steinke. Send it to Tina. We're still waiting to get an update on the condition of Stinky, but right now I was with the sport director and they actually had to chase Chance down. He was in the pits, relaxed, not even dressed, not expected to race at all. So they had to go up to him and said, hey, get ready. It's your turn. Yeah, not bad. Actually, he ran pretty yeah. well, considering he was probably not warmed up or prepared to go out and do this. Well, so thanks, he, and here he's headed back there on the 999. Give the guy a round of applause. This is as far out of his element as you could imagine. Yeah. Well done. Good job. So Carson Brown and Colton Eck will be our next run. They already raced once. Brown took the win. Eck needs to win this one, or he is eliminated. Carson Brown turned pro midway through this 2018 season. Very quick at a 125. Get this down. Yep. 
drop down that. I'm telling you, when you stand on that start, it's a big drop off. Don't let them fool you. And a lot closer early in this run than he was the first race between them, but the triple jumps. Oh, uh, Brown, uh, they're helping him to pull away. Yeah, Brown just gets through that a little bit better. But they're heading to the halfway point, so still time to be won or lost. And, and this is much closer than it was the first time around. He's been striking distance. If Brown makes a mistake, he can try to inherit the lead. That has been a constant three throughout the weekend. Oh, oh and there's, and the, there's mistake. the mistake. Is that what it takes to make this interesting? No, just not quite close enough. Oh, you can see Hank is really hustling, but he is out of his track. Carson Brown, despite the bubble, wins it and will move on to the next round. Take you know what was crucial with this? Brown did make the mistake, but when he made a mistake, look how quick he recovers. Watch, over, just cases that, bounces on that, dabs a break and gets right back in his rhythm, never loses, like doesn't roll a jump. That is what helped him win. Chase Marquier on the line. Kate, what do you have on him? He did say that he thinks it fits his riding style as it's light and you can throw it around and he really likes to ride loose, especially when he's having fun. And we'll see how much fun he's having in this one. Had to go against Porcel and did beat him in the first run. Porcel is back. Porcel has to win it or he will be eliminated by Marquier. Marquier riding for the JMC Motorsports squad. That is a Husqvarna team. Husqvarna still makes 125 two strokes, so it wasn't hard to source a bike there. All right. Here we never, go. Never count out Paulcel. We've always said the crafty Frenchman can uncork it when he has to. He's a little bit behind off the gate, but plenty of racetrack to go. Yep, he's actually pulled back even with Marquier, who had the edge early. Oh, but the triples for Marquier. A little bit quicker, but look at Paul Sell. Very efficient. If you're not going to triple, stay low to the ground. Get the wheels back on the ground. Look, he lost only about a half a bike lane. I think he's back into the number oh, one spot. And he's got it. Yes, Marquier bobbled. So now Paul Sell to the lead. Marquier case that jump. Robbed his momentum on these 125s. If you case one jump, meaning come up short, it, it stops you. And a mistake for Paul Sell. Wait, hey, here comes Marquier right back because of the bobble. Wheel to wheel to the ropes. Porcel almost throws it away. Who's got the chance to finish? Marquier. And Porcel could not even get the finish line jump. Didn't have the drive through the whoops. We have seen some great racing so far. Again, two or three times they swapped the lead. Well, look at that. You could see just with uh, Marquier, he gave everything. Look at the feet kicking off the pegs, and you see Porcel on those 125s. If you don't get a clean run through the whoops, that finish line jump is very tough. So Catanzaro against Surratt. Surratt was able to edge him just barely five hundredths of a second to win the first run. Catanzaro on that beautiful Kawasaki. It's a great story of someone who uh, spent yeah, thirty thousand dollars that they mentioned on that bike. A guy by the name of Spencer who does a lot of these cool things. Rack Racing is the backer for Catanzaro. The TM, the blue motorcycle for Surratt. This is like a stew and J Law. <laughs> little Three battle right here yeah, yeah. with the modernized guys. This is going to be fun. Look at this. Katsara, triple, triple. Just a couple bike lengths over Surratt, who was strong. Different Surratt. rhythm through there. Let's see how it figures out. is going to lead them through the first half. But Surratt did his damage in the second half of the run the first time. Can he do it again? He is starting to close. Yeah, this is interesting. Like you said, the left lane at times have proven a little bit better. But Kanzara flawless. Surratt just a little too far back, I think. He's going to need a James Stewart run through the woods to hold him off, and he gets it. Kanzara shakes his head. He knows he was a couple hundredths of a second away from moving in to the second round. But instead, we are going to have a third race between them. Surratt takes the first one. Catanzaro takes the second, which means they've got to race again. Fullerton back to the line on the beta. The off-road rider against that beautiful, it's actually a Yamaha. Now, McGrath rode a Honda back in the day, but because they were sponsored by Peak Antifreeze, they made the Hondas blue. So the easiest way to replicate that is to start with a blue Yamaha. Even that Renzo's patch on the back. This is MC2, the king. 
spin on it. A lot of clutch slip trying to prevent wheel spin, but still a little from both riders. Especially from Bulletin. But Bulletin's much improved on this run, though. He's improved throughout the weekend. Big hats off to this guy. He's probably stepped really far out of his comfort zone. So you've got to admire for an off-road guy going through one of the most technical supercrossy style sections with a supercross legend replica in front of him. <laughs> it's a little intimidating. Yeah, hard to say you can beat Jeremy McGrath. It sure looks like that's who he's racing. And Luke Rensland soak it in. The support from the fans who love the look and appreciate the riding. Rensland is moving on to the second round. Fullerton, who already thought his day was over, get back on the motorcycle and got to the line. Well, he had a chance. Yeah, it was cool to get him back in, unfortunately, with the injury to Stank Dog. And we have our first third race in this event because it was close between Surratt and Catanzaro. In both races, each has won one. They've got to do it again. Oh, I love tiebreakers. <laughs> I know that we say all along that this race is just fun. There's not a whole lot on the line. It's just a good, fun day on the dirt bike. But this has got to be extreme pressure right now. This is like uh, you got to hit clutch free throws or field goal. You make one mistake now, it is over. Well, you said exactly that. Okay. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, it's go for broke. Riders know how it works. They got to go for it. But uh, who knows? We saw what happened with Stank Dog. Tina, what are you hearing? Yeah, well, I was walking back to the Stinky Camp just to see uh, what was going on. You know, everyone over there was pretty disappointed. Uh, he was walking around. Uh, and I'm getting told that he's going to the hospital to get checked out. That's all I'm being told at this point. If I get anything more, I will let you know. Um, but, you know, we saw him pushing so hard, and he was ready to defend that title. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Uh, Stank entered in both classes, the crash in the 250 class. He's eliminated there, and then the injury prevents him from racing in the 125. So it is a whole new ball game this year. Ronnie Mack didn't show up for practice, he says, so he wasn't allowed to race. Stank Dog out. Those were the finalists in the two-stroke division a year ago. So things have changed. It's both devolved in a way because we're back at old school bikes, but it is evolved as far as how fast everyone is on them. So here it is, your battle, Cat Zero in green, Surratt in blue. This is for all the marbles you can see from both the riders. They're pushing hard. It's going to come down to who can be the cleanest. Look, AJ, triple, triple. That's a big help. Look, gets him just ahead. He went from just behind to just ahead. But he had a massive lead through that section in the first two races, and he didn't even win one of them. So this could be advantage to Rat, who has been very strong in the second half of the course. Can Catanzaro pick up on what Surratt was doing right? So far, the 338 pulling ahead. Surratt with a look over. That was very oh, oh mistake. Is that, that's it. Catanzaro has got it. He cannot blow it. Yeah, he's got to be perfect now to line. Surratt's going to keep on digging. But A.J. Catanzaro on the James Stewart lookalike 259 Kawasaki is going to the next round. And Surratt, it came down to this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, the oh, sprinkler. sprinkler. Classic <laughs> James Stewart victory celebration. But don't harm that beautiful motorcycle that Spencer put together. Oh, what a sprinkler right there, just watering the track. Here's Surratt. This is the decider. He got the lead, actually. Yeah, yeah he gives a little look over, a little confidence, but then watch. This is when it gets a little, little squirrely. Watch. Clip, and they cannot get through the rhythm. And that's what I've been saying all night long. It's so easy to make a mistake on a two-stroke, and they'll... Tss, tss, tss. Did you see me coming? Tss, tss. <laughs> get that grass green, folks. <laughs> all right, well... James Stewart, we saw some of the best of the 2000 two-stroke era. But really, tonight is a big celebration of the 90s. We've been rolling out these 90s were cooler features all night long. Here's another on Kidney Belts. I can remember being a kid, me having this freaking AXO kidney belt on, and I swear to God, it came up to my nipples. What are they for? Have we evolved? We don't have kidney issues anymore. I had kidney belts my whole life. What happened? Why do we not need them anymore? It felt like a waist slimmer. You know those things they sell on TV now, those waist slimmers? Like, that's the way I was wearing it. Might as well wear a beer belt or something. I don't know. McGrath wore a kidney belt. Shocked. Or bruise your kidney? I don't know. You're going to do that without the damn thing around your waist. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I wore a kidney belt. Kidney belts. These 90 pieces are the best. 
Shane McElrath and Jordan Smith. They're friends, teammates, and rivals. They are the elite riders on the TLD Red Bull KTM team, and they're as comfortable battling each other on this straight rhythm course as they are enjoying that RV lifestyle together off the track. You better be on your A game because last year I think I had you covered. Last year I remember he backed out before the night show. Staying out here, the Red Bull straight rhythm in the motorhome. Being in a camper this weekend really kind of gets me feeling like I'm, I'm back in North Carolina, I'm back in the woods, uh, just at local races again. Like the good old days, getting suited up in the motorhome. This race is really unique in the fact that I can come out here and kind of live in a camper, and it's cool to have that one unique race a year where we can kind of bring it back to our roots and, and just go have fun. Jordan and I have, have grown up racing each other and I just have memories when we were on 65s and 85s of being really the only two fast guys at the track, but we really wanted to beat each other. I ain't gonna let anything stand between me and that first place trophy. I think that I'm probably a little better cornhole player than Shane. It's hard to go back to getting seconds and thirds. It's really cool to be on a two-stroke and kind of relive the past a little bit. Who's the better 250 rider? We're gonna have to wait until Saturday to see that. Well, we've got some fast bites and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really cool to wake up on Saturday and walk out of the camper and boom, we're here ready to race. Those guys are shake and bake. From RV dealer locations, rental tips, campgrounds, activities, and stories from other RVers, Go RVing gives you everything you need to find your away. Visit GoRVing.com to learn more. And right now we're going to go back to Kate, who was at the start. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jason. You're 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 no Kate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll second that emotion, no doubt. Uh, it's been a great night so far, but there's been these super matchups that we're looking for. We already went through one round of the 250, so we're getting closer and closer. You know how brackets always work. You start with the highest seed against the lowest. So the racing is only going to get even tighter. And we've already seen, GL, several events come down to less than one-tenth of a second. Well, as a super fan myself, I've mm -hmm. been enjoying it, and I, I get excited at the finish. We actually get to see it right out our booth, the finish line, and they've been really close. Some of them more than less, but I tell you what, it, as you said, they only get tighter and tighter as we mm -hmm. move on. The riders are starting to feel their groove. Uh, they're getting more comfortable. And, I, and I'm telling you, no matter what, with two strokes, all these riders are feeling more and more comfortable with each and every run. A lot of them are coming in with less time or experience than they would have hoped for. So I'm telling you, right now, it's going to become even more interesting. Yeah, compared to Thursday, Friday, big improvements from a lot of the riders and also the bikes are running a lot better as well. So we're in Pomona, California. This is the Fairplex, always the home of Red Bull Straight Rhythm, but with a completely different twist this year, racing two strokes, a 125 class and a 250 class. We already raced the first round of the 250s, so now we are down to the Elite Eight. Ryan Dungey will face off against Cedric Subaros, the Frenchman, Ryan Villapoto against Josh Grant. That's an old rivalry there. Jordan Smith against Cameron McAdoo, and Shane McElrath, who has won this race several times on a four-stroke against the very speedy Ryan Morris. You know what I find more remarkable about this graphic is the, the highest seed won in every bracket. That usually never happens. So it's Subaros against Dungey. Let's meet the riders. since 2005 so it'll be an interesting event and let alone a 252 stroke and I've never raced so we'll see you're still going fast the speeds are high um, there's rhythm there are obstacles it's challenging oh the favorite part is uh, the sound good to go up against a stank dog but but probably Villapoto <laughs> We're taking it serious. It's all good fun, but deep down inside when the gate drops, it's all seriousness. 
My nickname was uh, Mr. Two Stroke over Europe. I was kind of one of the last rider in Europe to ride the two stroke in the MGP in 2010. This is the sound, I love it. It's what I like, you need to move on the bike and uh, it's uh, completely different. And we do some woom a lot, <laughs> but maybe we are bring the 90s back like that. <laughs> So again, it's going to get tighter as we move into the quarterfinals. Dungy was the fastest rider. Subaras the eighth quickest. Dungy eliminated the 16th fastest. Mike Brown earlier tonight. So we'll see how Dungy against Subaras goes here. And in straight rhythm, we run best two out of three. If you win two races, you move on. If you lose two races, you're out. If they each win one, we'll have a third race to determine who goes to the next round. So Ryan Dungey has never had a race on a 252 stroke in his illustrious career. He did some 125 two stroke races when he was a teenager in the amateur ranks. But his professional races were always on a 250 or 450 four stroke. We have seen rapid improvement each time Dungey has gotten on the bike throughout the weekend. Well that and he's got the Red Bull KTM team behind him. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that bike is just barking if you're out here in person. I mean it just sounds like it produces horsepower. But for the Dunge, as you said, not a ton of two-stroke experience, a retired rider, but this guy is in shape. If you if you measure his waist, I'm telling you, he is he a rare than even oh, his racing you. somehow. Yeah. It's making me look bad. <laughs> but Subaros is especially skilled in technical supercross type conditions, battling off the gate right now. Well, two supercross champions from opposite sides of the Atlantic. Dungey off to a great start. Headed to go, RVing double, and Dungey able to lead Subaros through there. As we head to the middle of the track, about a three bike length lead for the four time champion of Supercross. All right, he's going to scrub it over here, and now he comes over the halfway jump, the tunnel jump. He land off this little scrub. He's going to double in, double over again, onto this tabletop. Oh, he goes over, now on, off. Ooh, a little close to the white line in the middle. Crowd comes to life as they see Dungey run right in front of them through the whoops, and he wins his first race against the Frenchman, Subaros. Subaros on a Suzuki RM250. They haven't made that bike in a long time. But the bike sure looks brand new. That thing is fresh and ran pretty well. But he's got to come back and try to beat Dungey in the next one. Let's send it down to Kate. The moisture is in the track right now, and that is really helping them. It's making those braking zones a little bit later, and they really feel more comfortable because the traction is there for their bikes. Of course, these bikes are already quite difficult to be riding as they are very aware, but they are both moving on and feel very comfortable with the moisture right now within that track. All right, we are back to the next matchup, Villapoto versus Josh Grant. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Two very talented riders, one still a pro, Josh Grant. I'm telling you, don't ever ride him off. Villapoto has everything. Let's get to know him. Everybody's gunning for me. I'm the number one most retired, the best retired guy out there. Come on. 2018 YZ250 Bradshaw replica. Pretty badass machine. Put it this way. Pair me up, or hopefully I'm paired up with somebody that I know I can beat. Look out, Spain. I actually think this, this race is probably more critical to hit your marks than a normal Supercross race. Ryan Villapoto, number two, riding a 2018 YZ250. First time at this event, feels pretty cool, been able to check out the track. For me, I haven't, I haven't raced the two-stroke or even rode two-stroke since like 2002, so I'm really not nervous about anybody racing, but I think it's just more of, you know, getting the feel of the two-stroke, the jumps, that type of stuff. Yeah, I can't wait. This is one of my favorite things, and riding the two-stroke, I just, I just want to hear it scream. Smell of my two-stroke, probably, probably the best air freshener you can put in your house. <laughs> and we're 
racing here with Grant and Villapoto. Kia whole shot going to Villapoto. He's got a slight edge, but Grant oh. holding it right back with a huge scrub. Halfway point. This is where JG shines. He has uncorked a big jump there. Little bubble. This is going to be interesting. He can't get it. He couldn't get the big jump he wanted, so now it comes down to the ropes. And Villapoto has been lightning quick through there all night, and he continues, and he holds off Grant. Great battle between those two who have a lot of history. They're about the same age. They came to the ranks together. They battled on 250s and 450s on four strokes for a long time. Here is that Kia hole shot. Slight edge for Villapoto early. Grant was in comeback mode. Well, JG actually looked like he had like a wheel length off the start. You see it there. But it changes shortly after that. Watch Villapoto. Gets the wheels on the ground, drives off those tabletops. It's hard to see from the front, but he's got more forward bite. And there you can see he has taken the lead and he never lets it go because he never makes a mistake. Both riders giving it everything they caught. And I tell you what, Villapoto, that was impressive. So we'll be back with more Villapoto and Grant because you got to win two races to eliminate the other rider. Should be fun to get those two old rivals back on the track. Next matchup, it's going to be Cameron McAdoo against Jordan Smith. Let's talk to these two. I'm Jordan Smith. This weekend, I'm racing the KTM 252 stroke. The best part of the two strokes is probably just the smell, the sound of them. This event with uh, all the crap talking you can do before is really unique. I've already been talking quite a bit of crap to Ryan Villapoto, so looking forward to uh, going head to head with him and, and seeing what I can do. I'm a replacement rider for Pulp MX. He called me four days ago, and um, I was like, yeah, why not? I haven't rode a two-stroke since 2012 Loretta's on a YZ125, and coming out here to send it for the boys. I'm excited to ride the two-stroke. It's going to be sick. Like, those guys that did it racing Supercross back whenever they were, and that was gnarly, so I'm excited to see what it was really like. best part of two-strokes is the sound of them. You can have a good sounding 250F or whatever, but a crisp 125 or 252 stroke is just unbeatable. There's going to be a lot of great guys out here this weekend, and I would have to say that Ryan Dungey would be my dream matchup. Well, to get to Ryan Dungey, McAdoo's going to have to go through Jordan Smith. He's on a factory KTM. His team manager, Steve Mathis, says the goal is to ram it up against the factory teams. So let's see if McAdoo can get it done. It was supposed to be Alex Ray on that bike. Alex Ray got hurt. McAdoo, as he mentioned, the Peeps only got on the bike this week. We'll see how he performs against Smith, who has been lightning quick every time he's been out on the racetrack. Yeah, I think Jordan Smith could be the favorite here. Oh, you can hear those bikes bark straight away. Smitty with a bit of a launch out there. Great off the gate, but McAdoo, so consistent, stays right there. McAdoo keeping him honest, and I think actually wrestling the lead from Smith, who was the faster rider in qualifying. McAdoo on the gas, but Smith, beautiful over the top of those tabletops, and is able to edge ahead. Yeah, he was smooth through there. Little bobble from McAdoo, and he cases that jump. Now bike length of two behind. But oh, but a few tight. mistakes from Smith. McAdoo's got another shot. The America's tire whoop section coming up, separating them from the finish line. McAdoo rode very well, but Smith just that much better. McAdoo kept him honest. First half of the run, he was right there. I think if he didn't make that mistake earlier on, it would have kept things really interested. But uh, of course, he has a chance to redeem himself. So now Shane McElrath and Ryan Morris, both on factory prepped KTMs. Let's talk to them about racing some two strokes. We're out here at the Red Bull Straight Rhythm for 2018, and they took away my four stroke. I'm on a 252 stroke. I didn't even get a choice this year. They said, plan on riding a 252 stroke, and here I am. I couldn't even argue. This year I get to race all the, the big guys, the past champions, four times. Actually, there's two four times, just not in a row. 
I've worn this event the last two years, and I'm gonna do all I can to do it again. You can't beat the sound of a nice, clean, FMF equipped 252 stroke. I would say my favorite part as far as when you look at a two stroke is just the pipe, like just the look of them. The sound of it when you're riding it is what gives me joy. Everyone here is really good. Obviously the dream matchup would be me and Dungeon in the final, but it would be a tough one with everyone that's lined up. McElrath versus Morris. McElrath won this race in the 254 stroke class the last two years, but that was considered the stepping stone class to the main division. Now he's in the big class, which is considered 252 strokes tonight. So you think he could be a favorite because he's won this race before, but Ryan Morris has been so quick all night long. He's been solid, he's been strong. And a little edge. I'd say the Kia whole shot goes to the 116 of Morris. But quickly, you see with the pink helmet, that's a custom painted 1990s style Troy Lee Designs lid on the 12 of McElrath. And he's making a comeback against Morris. Well, I've got to say, Ryan Morris riding phenomenal at the moment. If he holds off on this one, it's been a huge upset. Morris, a test rider for KTM. It's been around a long time. I've known the guy. He almost won an East Coast title. Right now, trying to get redemption. He's on fire. Yes, and McElrath, one of the best in the Supercross game right now, and he's using those skills to come back. He has wrestled the lead. Oh, this is tight. Into the America's tire whip section. Through the wheel. And a clutch performance by McElrath to come from behind when Morris had the edge. Oh, that was interesting. Morris had it the first half. You can see McElrath, he dug deep. I think Ryan Morris may be just not quite as precise in the second half. See, he doesn't get the wheels on the ground quite oh. as good. Oh! Uh, McElrath! Yes, he hit the line. So that might result in a DQ and maybe give the win back to Morris. We'll wait for the officials to judge that one. That is part of the game. If you switch lanes, I, I learned that in uh, qualifying the very first year. I got a little squirrely through the whoops and I used the hole straight away. And they say, no, you can't do that, Mr. Langston. You, that white line means like, that's a divider. So we'll see how they score with Morris and McElrath, who will have to race again anyway to go into their second run. We're back to the top of the bracket. Ryan Dungey against Cedric Subaras. Dungey won the first one between these two. If he wins this, he moves on. Subaras needs to win it to force a third run between them. Dungey a slight edge on Subaras early on. Subaras on the yellow Suzuki. Dungey on that orange KTM. Subaras very precise to those triples to keep Dungey under control. He's right there with him. Dungey is on fire, but you saw him clip the top of that jump. Little bubble there. Subaras is riding well. Dungey may have given the chance to get back in the game. Oh, Subaras overjumped that jump. Lost another bike length. And I think he touched the white line also. Subaras going to keep trying. But that mistake gives Dungey about five bike lengths. Now, in view of the fans, into the whoops. Ryan Dungey has eliminated Cedric Subaras and is moving on into the semifinals. Yeah, he's the Dungeonator. <laughs> he's here to eliminate people. Subaras, that was a really great run from him. He gave it everything. Through these tabletops, they've been tricked for all these guys all day long. You see them scrubbing, and then Subaras got an awkward kick. His rear wheel brushed the line there. I think, I think the officials would be cool with that. But later on, before the whoops. So Ryan Dungey's going to move on. He's won two rounds, one against Brown, one against Subaras. Let's send it down to Tina. Yeah, and just a few minor mistakes on there, but Cedric was a bigger mistake, and uh, you got the lead. Just walk us through that. Um, you know, I got off to a good start, obviously, and uh, I hung the rhythm lane a little bit, but then just tried to stay consistent. Uh, 
more chase after my more chase after a good lap time more than competing against another guy kind of try to set the standard a little higher but I'm just having fun yeah just enjoying it okay but you do have the potential depending on who wins the next heat to race against Villapoto yeah. so what can you say about that I would be pumped I uh, was kind of hoping that would that would happen I, uh, I hope that he can do it and we can uh, go head to head like old times so be fun thanks Ryan uh, Kate Josh Grand, I was talking to him earlier about at being at the starting grade, helmet on, knowing what to expect. And he said, you have to be mistake free, but you also have to look to find speed where you can get that extra speed. He said, one thing that you don't want to do, though, is look over at your opponent. He said, because the moment you do that, you lose your rhythm. And my friends, that's what this is all about, is being in po on point with that rhythm, Jason. Yeah, absolutely, Kate. And Grant always known as someone that is fearless as far as sending the huge jumps. And he does have a combination that no one has done. But he said, it's not something I want to have to do. If I need to do it, I'll give it a shot. He tried. He couldn't quite clean it against Villapoto in their first race. And Villapoto got the win. If Villapoto wins this one on the number two, he moves on. The 33 of Grant has to win this one or he is eliminated. And a great start for Grant. Good start from Grant. Villapoto, also a solid start, but JG needs this. He doesn't need to uncork that jump now that he's ahead. Just do not make a mistake and be, well, remind yourself that you've got a four-time Supercross champion behind you. If there's one thing he knows how to do, that's go fast in a straight line. Mistake from JG. And a little one from Villapoto, but Villapoto is closer than ever. It's about half of the bike lane, but Grant continuing to control it. This is the rhythm lane where Grant has the big jump. Doesn't do it though. Nope, he doesn't need to because he's got the lead on Filippoto. He's got to nail the whoops. But Filippoto has been very close to the whoops. No, Grant beats Filippoto and we're going to a third run. Yeah, and there's his dad, Mike Grant. He's pumped. This is what we love yeah, right here. Man. Let's go, three rounds, baby. The crowd is on their feet. They are fired up. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited too. I love this stuff right now. This is cool. There's Mike Grant, there's the reaction. Yeah. There's a proud papa right there. Villapoto yeah. sent it through these whoops. But, he was uh, good. Yeah, but so good. Grant did not lose much ground there and was able to maintain his advantage to the end. So this is gonna be high pressure. Back to the starting gate we go. McAdoo has to try to beat Jordan Smith or he will be eliminated on the number 44. Smith leads it one to nothing. They split, uh, switch lanes from where they were earlier. Oh, more tension. Is he a McAdoo or McAdoo? Let's see. McAdoo, we're going round three. This will be fun. But Smitty's been strong all day, I'm telling you. McAdoo was there for about three quarters of their first run. Smith got away. That was a quick game drop, and I think that caught McAdoo off. He looked like a little caught off guard how quick that game drop, and he lost about a half bike length immediately. It's going to be tough. All right, center of the racetrack. Can McAdoo find something special? Ooh, he over jumped off of the top of that table a little bit, but he's still right there. We're hitting the halfway point. This is the halfway jump right here. McAdoo still has a chance for Smitty. If he doesn't make that bubble, he's got this. Jordan Smith out of Belmont, North Carolina on that Red Bull Joyley Designs KTM. But that's normally a 254-stroke team. They built him a 252-stroke for tonight, and he's taking it in to the next round as he is eliminated. Cameron McAdoo. McAdoo, though, for a guy who had not ridden this motorcycle until Tuesday. Solid performance, even though he's out of competition now. He rode it well. So we got another run coming here. Fast paced, right? McElrath <laughs> versus Morris. Yeah, it's nonstop racing here in Red Bull straight rhythm. It's still saying McElrath one to nothing over Morris. We saw him get uh, right on top of that white line. I don't know how they decided to rule that. He did beat Morris to the finish line, but just barely. I'd say about 80% of that race, Morris was leading him. <laughs> Ryan Morris, really the retired guy that's stepping it up, putting his name in this mix. Here they go. Kia whole shot on the line. Man, that's almost too close to call. Maybe a slight edge to McElrath on the 12. Morris on the 116 coming right back on him. Double, triple, triple, double. Then soak it up over the step up. Now 
Now the double, triple, and scrub it over this jump coming up. Oh, sorry, tabletops. Then they will soak it up, scrub it over this big jump, and they hit wide open. McElrath sure looks strong this time. One rhythm section and the whoops remain. McElrath maintaining his edge. He stepped it up from where they were in the first one, where Morris was ahead. And to the America's tire whoop section, McElrath holds off Morris to advance to the next round. Morris, speedy all day and night, but it's not enough to stop McElrath. Let's check out the run through the whoops to the finish for McElrath. He gets through this final rhythm lane and then heads for daylight. Yeah, just strong to the finish. McElrath, but we gotta say for Ryan Morris, that was really a clutch performance tonight. Solid, didn't make the big mistake, but didn't quite have what it took, but oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh. now these two have had some classic battles through the years. Villapoto, a four-time Supercross champion. But on any given night, Josh Grant, when he was feeling it, could run with Villapoto. Maybe tonight's another one of those. Josh Grant, incredible natural uh, talent. Maybe the most underrated rider on the grid. But Villapoto, with all the credentials, it could be interesting. Oh, 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 oh. oh Grant about a half a bike length on Villapoto right now. Everything those two riders had, I'm telling you, oh, yeah. they gave it all right there. This is Whoa, wide open into that pit. But right now, Grant continues to maintain the lead. Villapoto oh, in the red and black. No mistake from Grant. Grant made the little mistake. Villapoto side by side. They scrub it. Oh, my goodness. Halfway point. Pushing to get right back on it. It is absolutely side by side. Dead even into the final. Will Grant try the big jump combo? No! This is so close. They scrub it. It's the Whoops. Who's going to get the drive? Right to the finish! I can't even call That was it. so close. Unbelievable. And it's Mike gonna thinks be... it was his boy. Uh, I mean, he's I got mean... reason to believe it was right there. His dad doesn't know. No, and they're it was Filippoto. It's Filippoto. By, by one hundredth of a second. Unbelievable between these two. This is it. This this was tabletops. Watch them. They scrub this jump. It was so even. Then they float over this next big jump. That's the halfway point, the tunnel jump. Another speed check. This rhythm was crucial. I mean, they were so close. Grant couldn't get the big rhythm, so it came down to the whoops. They both gave it everything they had. <laughs> Maybe Villapoto got the rear wheel down an instant earlier, got the drive, and got it. A 43-2 versus a 40. Three, one, nine. Villapoto eliminates Grant, and now we will see the Ryans, oh. Villapoto and Dungey, and then Smith against his teammate McElrath. Let's send it to Tina. Yeah, and I wish you guys could have heard how loud the crowd was screaming down here. Ryan, it came down. It doesn't get much closer than that. How hard were you pushing there at the end? Yeah, no, it definitely was uh, definitely close. Josh was on it, and, uh, you know, just... Uh, didn't make any real mistakes, but didn't have a super clean run. So glad to get to the next round. It's uh, it's going to be tough. Either I'm going home or Dunge is going home next. Yeah, and it's been smack talking leading up to now, and now it's uh, the riding does the talking. Now it's go time. So Dunge, I hope you're ready. Good stuff. Hey, Kate, what's going on? You know, Villapoto just said, hey, Dunge, I hope you're ready. How ready are you to go side by side against Villapoto? Yeah, I'm ready. I actually was hoping we were going to face off at some point, and we are. So. Uh, it's good. That was an amazing race, and that's what's so fun about this event. It's just splitting hairs, but a uh, good race, and uh, we'll be prepared. Try to give it our best. It was a good race. You were here watching the sidelines. What did you learn from RV? Well, he didn't make any mistakes, um, and the left side seems to be a little harder not to clip things, and he did it really nicely, actually executed perfectly. So that's what's going to make it tougher. Tina, you said there's smack talk. Jason, we've been hearing this all week long, and it's fun to see them battling it out here in just a bit. Yeah, it's no longer hype on social media. It's about to be reality now. There's so much you can say about the two Ryans. For eight straight years, they owned the Supercross championship between the two of them. Dungey more starts, more wins. He was always the guy that was never hurt, never injured, always there. But Villapoto, you see, 43 wins and 103 starts, a higher win percentage. So yep. either way you slice it, these were the guys that owned the sport indoors and out for eight straight years, and they'll be up later on in the show. As we celebrate the 90s tonight with Red Bull Straight Rhythm, let's get to another piece on the 90s being cooler.
they're like, hey, we got this new guy, and his name's Seth, and then he started coming out. No blood in the picture, it's not good, right? He just jumped ridiculous stuff that was literally not jumpable. And I'm using the word literally, meaning literally, because it would always go badly. And that's what made the guy legend. I go to the doctor, I need to, I don't need to, I don't. Oh, Krusty 2, when we're out at Glamis. So I'm watching him, and it's like, landed on all my, my brand new Hondas that I had. I think I had a quote, and I'm like, oh my god, that was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. That was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I did. That was so dumb. Uh, the legend of the crusty demons of dirt. I have been to all five of these events, and I have to say that tonight has to be some of the greatest head-to-head -head racing that I've ever seen. So close with the back and forth, and then everything we could have hoped hoped for when we finally get to see the two Ryans, Villaboto and Dungey, plus Smith and McElrath. This is what you want out of straight rhythm. Kate, I know that you have Smith and McElrath. Let's see how fired up they are. I think fired up is a good word. You know, interestingly enough, earlier in the day, I was talking to both these guys, and you both made comments about the other. What do you know that he can bring to the track here today? Uh, he's uh, he's really fast and just he hits his marks almost every time. So uh, you just have to hang it out a little more than him. And, and at the end there, he's really good in that last rhythm section all the way to the finish line. So no matter kind of what the gap you have, if you do have a gap to that point, you have to be on point through that whole rhythm section or he'll get you. Good insight from Jordan. Now, Shane, earlier you said that uh, you're a little bit different of a rider. And actually, he made the comment that you're you're so your attitude is like winning the lottery every single day. But you need a little more Jordan. Why? Uh, because this is serious. I mean, we're, we're out here. This is this is a, a good fun race and it's not important on paper, but we can make a payday. So, um, I mean, obviously we're both going to give it our all and we're both competitive and Jordan's not afraid to let it hang out. So I, uh, I got to really be on it if I'm going to race the finals against either number two or number five. Uh, it's so cool. These two teammates are going to battle it out, both knowing what they can bring to the track. Jason. Oh, yeah, they've known each other really their entire racing lives, and they see each other at the test track every day now as professionals. Let's transfer back over to the 125 class. Four riders remain. Carson Brown will go against Chase Marquier. AJ Catanzaro will go against Luke Renslin in a showdown of the retro yep. tribute bike builds. Brown was the fastest qualifier of the 125 division. We'll see if he can carry that speed all the way through against Marquier. Interesting thing about this track, they kind of designed the rhythms to be totally different when you have 125s and 250s. So what you just saw in the 250 division, you're going to see completely different types of jumps out of these two. Marquier on the 96 and Brown on the number 910. Brown relatively new to the pro ranks. Marquier has been at it for a couple of years now. Both ride for the JMC Motorsports Husky squad. They'll be doing some professional Supercross racing later in the year, but right now it's for fun and for pride on 125s. Oh, that sounds good to hear two 125s ripping off the line. A little advantage for Brown, but Marquee charging into that speed check to try to come back. Marquee in the blue gear, Brown in the black. Yeah, this is all important to see a little different rhythm there when they come out not too far apart. At the moment, Brown got the edge. These 125s to double things. That tabletop section is very, very tough because of the lack of horsepower. But these guys able to get through it. No major mistake. See the down shift there. A lot more shifting on these 125 two strokes. They go from second to third to fourth. Back down to second. Back up again, especially for the whoops. They'll go from second to third. And here it is. Carson Brown holds off Marquee. First third of the race, Marquier was there. At about the midpoint, Brown started to pull away. And they'll be back for another run in just a moment. Other side of the bracket is Catanzaro against Rensland. I think we could say this is the best looking matchup because they both have the awesome tribute bike builds. Rensland, Dreamland USA has sponsored. That is actually his track in Florida, which is an absolutely superb place. It's like yeah, a dream awesome. it really to is. ride, yeah. Catanzaro makes money as a racer, but also by hosting riding schools during the week. Now it's his job to try to take Renslin to school here. <laughs> oh, they're going to try and school each other. Don't 
make a mistake from that. They want to be the coolest looking retro riders out there. And the fastest, and right now a slight edge, maybe a bike link to Rensland, who's been so good through these triples, but Catanzaro does it as well. He does, he does it so well. Now here's where it gets tough for the two strokes. 125, it's a little mistake from Rensland. Look at that, that helped Catanzaro. Yeah, the cat right back with it, side by side. A good little scrub from the 259, and the cat needs to go right there. Halfway point, then we're neck and neck. Gotta keep it clean, double. Gotta get on this table. Don't mess it up, get off. Get over this. Oh, now the hoops, that's all the hoops. hoops. Let's see if Catanzaro can send it through. He does, oh, the pegs, I thought he was gonna go down. And there's the rack racing crew at Catanzaro. Oh, so he came close, but is gonna lose by about half of a bike length. Rensland beats him in the first run. That was close. Look at the front wheel miss one. Catanzaro, his feet were off. He almost crossed the line. I think had that not happened, that would have been a photograph finish. The rack crew, that's short for random acts of kindness. These guys. They do a lot of cool things. They work with youngsters. They take that money and they reinvest it and help. That's awesome to have all that intensity of a traditional race piled into 45 seconds. And they can't hear, we can't hear them. I'm surprised we can't. Can. I'm surprised we can't just hear them from the pits screaming that loud. So we go back to Brown against Marquier. Marquier has to win this one or he is eliminated. This is for a bid into the finals. And Brown still rides a 125 a lot. Actually, Ryan Villapoto, one of his first two-stroke races ever, was at a race in Washuga, Washington a couple years ago. And it was like, oh, Ryan Villapoto's here racing. It's amazing. He got beat by a 15-year-old at the time, Carson Brown. And that kind of put Brown on the map as well. Not only one of the up-and-coming hot amateurs in the country, but a bit of a specialist on the 125. And he has proven that hype is reality here on the 910. Key a whole shot up for grabs, and I believe it's Marquier on the 96. Yep, got it. Slight lead. Oh, oh, but the triple, triple, and Brown to the number one spot. Yeah, slightly different rhythm, but there were two triples from both riders just at different times, but that did. It helped Marquier just a little bit. No, sorry, Brown. Yep, Brown, maybe a half of the bike length. Marquier in the blue, trying to come back. Double turn down whips. Through the rhythm. One mistake will make a difference. It was a mistake. Brown did it. And now, yes, Marquier in the number one spot. Brown's getting through the rush. Oh, look at Brown. Brown's going to win. I think you got him. That was a cut. That was a lead. Come from behind. Get it back again. Get her done. In the final whoop section, I thought Marquier had it for sure. And you can see he is frustrated. He had the lead going into the whoops. Brown with a last ditch effort pulls it out and he's going to the finals. On those 125s, you can make it happen in the whoops. Watch this through the rhythm. Little bobble there. Watch. Marquier gets over and that changes it. Brown cased it a little bit. Then watch this. Brown is about to come back. He gets a great drive. He's on the white line, doesn't cross it, but. <laughs> lead, lose it, lead, lose it, and then grab it. Brown. Everything he had through those whoops and is able to pull out a run that looked like it was lost for him. So we go back to the retro bikes. Yeah, it says McGrath on the bike. That's not Jeremy McGrath. That's Luke Rensland. That is a genuine article. A fan had gotten that chest protector from Jeremy McGrath back in the day. They switched the name earlier. That's that's really Jeremy McGrath's chest protector. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rensland had gone on eBay saying, I want to find one of these old AXO chess pros from the 90s. And someone said, I don't know. I don't just have one of them. I have one of the actual Jeremy McGrath items. And he's running it right now on the number 125. I think a lot of fans would love to have seen this in reality. Stewie against MC <laughs> McGrath and Stewart going at it. It looks like it. This would be, you could say this would be them at the peak of their careers. Peak. Uh, 125, yeah, peak. Peak. yes. And Rensland always so strong through that triple, triple every time he's on the track. Oh, but a mistake on the tabletops. He just came up a little short, lost a little drive. Look at Kansara. The cat is right there on that green 259. And in fact, I believe he has the lead. Rensland fighting back into the view of the fans here in the grandstands of the Fairplex. Kansara the lead. Oh, they both come up short on the tabletop. Kansara lost half a bike lane. It's down to the roofs. Who's got the drive? Who's got the heart to the roof? Time the rack 
and Raging Crew got what they wanted, the win. And Rensland is going to have to go back to the gate. Same for Catanzaro for a runoff. <laughs> I'm telling you, for a race that's supposed to be for fun, Grant, you can tell these guys, it is all hard when it gets down to the whoop section. Well, as they come down the track, we get to see them in plain sight in front of us, and it's hard not to watch them blitz the whoops in front of us. And, uh, well, thank goodness for timing and scoring, transponders. Yeah, Nick and I could definitely not tell. See, Catanzaro had it. That little bobble cost him. Then they became even here. Then watch. He's half a bike length behind. Gets a great drive. And just gets it. It is uh, one hundredth, uh, sorry, one tenth at the line. Look at that. Rensland trying to get that rear tire on the ground to try to get some traction and some acceleration. <laughs> Random acts of kindness. Yeah, the rack racing team all about the positive thinking. I'm positive that we are going to have a runoff between those two. Kate, what do you have on Rensland on the 125? It's a tribute to Jeremy McGrath, built by Skip Norfolk, who is also Jeremy's mechanic. So he has seen a whole lot of racing in his days. I asked him, what does he see in Luke? as a writer and he said he's super consistent he doesn't make a lot of mistakes and he really doesn't turn his head off that'll be extremely important here in the third race i'm worried about uh, jay cavanaugh there from rack racing i don't know if his heart can take another one of these runs those guys have been super emotional with these close battles and speaking of close battles this will be coming up next the ryans there's villapoto and to our left there's ryan dungey I didn't think we'd ever see these two race again after a good dozen years of some of the best battles a sport has ever seen. They both retired. What well, we all wanted rhythm. to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the Ryans will be up next. But first, let's settle it between the James Stewart Retro Kawasaki ridden by AJ Catanzaro and the Jeremy McGrath Lookalike Machine ridden by Luke Rensland. Rensland won the first race. Catanzaro won the second. Heart rates are still probably up because there's such a short break between these two runs. What's on the line? A run in the finals against Carson Brown. Slight of edge right now for the blue and white of Luke Rensland. Originally out of New Jersey, does his riding in Florida. Catanzaro based in Connecticut. And Catanzaro triple triples, triples. That's a big deal on 125. Look, it went from behind to ahead. He's got to get clean through here. The tabletops. He struggled the first time, and that gave Rensland a chance to get back in the game, and he's back in it. Oh, it's going to be another showdown right down to the line. Maybe a bike leg for Catanzaro. Rensland had been good at the early triples every time he was on the track except now. So he's put himself in a big hole with the finish line in sight. Can Rensland find oh, something new? He went off the he track. Chases. And AJ Catanzaro is going to the finals. Rensland gave it everything. He scrubbed that jump so hard. He got a little squirrely off it. And uh, Casey jumped. Oh, here we go. Oh, we got a worm? Do we have a oh, worm? worm? Yes. 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 <laughs> Another one from the classic James Bubba Stewart playbook. Has he got a third one? Saved in case he wins the finals against Carson Brown. Well, how about the pressure of straight rhythm? Renslin was the man through those triples all day long. He didn't get them when it counted in this one. Yeah, I see he clipped it there and he got a little too much air time. It pushed him off. He was going to hit that hay bale. He pulled left. That put him out of it. But nothing better than the worm. James Stewart at Anaheim. I remember watching this. And as a racer at the time, it was not something you wanted to see. A young, talented rider with a ton of confidence moving on up through the ranks. Yeah, now it is a tribute bike. AJ Catanzaro rides it. Let's send it down to Tina. Yeah, the battle of the retro bikes, and what a battle that was. Uh, walk us through that and what you did to make the difference. Uh, this, I mean, a straight line is just who wants it more. The one before that, I had to double all the way through. And I just said, don't give up. I knew picking the right side, the whoops are a little faster at the end. So I just tried to hold the kit together. Tell you what, this is the most nerve wracking 45 seconds you can imagine. You know, you have the retro bike, James Stewart. You also have the worm dance down oh, there. How'd it look? I hurt myself a little bit, but hopefully it looked good. It looked pretty good. Uh, you know, he's won this event before, so you're living up, to, you gotta live up to some big expectations. Yeah, when I did this tribute, everyone said you got some big shoes to fill. I'm not trying to fill anybody's shoes. He's a legend, but at least I can ride okay to 
pay the 259 some credit it's due. Helmet fins. Ah. Oh yeah, the 57 Chevy fins that uh, MC had on the back, the blazing light. Of course, they were red. Were there any aerodynamics involved at all with this? Did it do anything? Helmet fins? Of course they made you faster. It's like aerodynamic. My were said, pro circus style. I like the light-up ones myself that uh, like Ernesto Fonseca used to rock. I did have a light-up one. Forgot about that. I hated the MC helmet thing. Yeah, I can imagine he would be hating that. Especially the one with the light, because I saw it, because it was at the back of his helmet, and typically that's where I was at. I'd like the, 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 the rear view, the shot. I should have put my face on the back so he could look at that all the time, too. It sucked. I didn't like it. No, next subject. Ah, uh, you gotta love the Jeff Bemig McGrath rival Mia. You could tell that it still lasts to this day. I love the fact that they still have fun with it. And yeah, those those fins. Aerodynamic? Uh, I don't think so. You guys have clearly been enjoying tonight's straight rhythm. I'm getting some questions and, and all sorts of feedback here uh, on Twitch, on social media. Uh, people saying, hey, which Ryan do you think is going to win, Sal? Um, I'm going to go with Dungy. I think he wants it just a little bit more. Villapoto obviously got him off the couch, um, talking all that smack. But I'm, I'm going to go with Dungy. Uh, someone else is asking, what does my victory dance look like? Uh, yeah, I think we're going we're, 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 we're gonna to skip that one. This is a good question. What's it smell like? It smells like two-stroke joy. You just take a, a good deep breath. And you just feel, you, you smell that fuel mix, and it makes you feel alive. That and the sound of the two-stroke just wang, 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 back and forth here. I'm having the best time ever that you could ask for here. And we are ready for the semifinals. Kate, I know you are fired up. What do you got? Cool, calm, and collected. Ryan Villapoto is sitting here ready to go up to the starting gate. But more importantly, Ryan Dungey was watching you. And he said, you make no mistakes. How much pressure are you putting on yourself knowing that the competition is pretty steep? I mean, I like he thinks that way, but he makes less mistakes than I do. So um, and that's what it's going to come down to. It's, uh, I think we're both pretty close in speed-wise and in, in the time. So um, a good start and just a clean run is, is what it's going to take to beat him. How much fun is it knowing the competition is something that you guys have been having this rivalry for years? I think what's most fun about it is is whatever happens, happens, and there's nothing riding on tonight. So I can go back and have a beer and, and uh, you know, just just enjoy and having fun with, with this race. All right. Good luck out there. Be safe. And Ryan Dungey, he just said that uh, you don't make any mistakes. Any last words as you are making your way? What's going on in your mind? Just have some fun. There's not much riding on this, so just uh, to be able to do this again is uh, pretty cool. I'd say that's probably right. Pretty cool indeed. I guess we're going to find out who is the best of the retirees here tonight. Yeah, this has to be a dream scenario, not just for the fans and for us, but even for them. I don't think they expected to face off in a race. Filippoto actually retired in 2015. Dungey went on to win quite a few more titles and races after that. He retired in 2017. But to think that they would both race again, let alone against each other, and in a head-to-head -head type battle like this on two strokes, That's couldn't have scripted it better. It. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they didn't so much. They say it, but this is what we wanted. RV and RD. Maybe the longest running rivalry at the top of the sport ever. And what was interesting about it, when they paddled, they always kept it between the lines. We never really heard cheap shots, trash talk. They never really rode each other rough on the track. It was just two competitors that wanted the same thing. Absolutely. There are maybe more bitter rivals in the sport, but when you consider that the Supercross title went exclusively between them for eight straight years, 2011 through 2017, this the credentials speak for themselves. Is on their feet already. The game hasn't dropped. It's Ryan versus Ryan. Kia a whole shot on the line. I think maybe a slight edge to Villapoto, but quickly Dungey shoots to the lead. Dungey's got it right now. They do the same rhythm. No major mistakes. About a bar, maybe a bike length at most. Villapoto still in it. Dungey to the right. They a couple little scrubs. Yeah, Villapoto starting to pull even. He was a bike length behind, making a half. Nearly wheel to wheel. They go to this double. This is the halfway point of this jump. Dungey, like you said, with a bike length. This 
this is where it's going to happen. All right, so the whoops are coming up. The crowd responding. They've got the Lions right in front of them. Dungey pulling away just a bit. Can Villapoto find something in the whoops? He oh. does. It's not enough. He had a run. If those whoops were longer, that would have been interesting. But Dungey, too strong on that one. Got out of the gate clean. Didn't bobble. Right when Villapoto got there, like right to his wheel. You can tell Dunn just was able to just eke away. And look at this place. They are going, they're going bananas. I, I can hear them below us. They're not on our microphones, but they are enjoying it. Oh, let's see the two Ryans duking it out like this again. At this point, it looked like hope was lost, but Filippo to a couple little scrubs on some of the smaller jumps got him close. He was very fast at the entrance to the woods. Well, his front wheel missed like two of them. Dungey missed the last one, but Villapoto had a head of steam there. And as we've said before, I think a lot of the riders prefer that left lane as, as you ride it. Dungey was on the left side. Okay. So when you flip it now, <laughs> just saying. It's gonna, I think, I think if the, that was a carbon copy and you flipped them, might have been the same result, meaning the right lane would have won. Sorry, the left lane over the right lane. Kate, what are you hearing on the uh, number five there of Dungey? It turns out that Dungey has been consistent on both lanes. He actually was faster on the left side earlier in warm-ups and practice, but then here tonight, he was running pretty quick on the right. He did say, though, he thinks that left side is a little steeper down by the whoops. Something to note as these guys are getting ready to go back out. I believe Dungey will be on the right in this one. He won it on the left. Villapoto's mechanic there is his dad, Dan, and the old mechanic for Dungey is the new mechanic again. That is Carlos. They're locking their bikes in. We're ready for our next round. It's teammate against teammate. Shane McElrath on the number 12, Jordan Smith on the 28. Whereas Dungey and Villapoto have come out of retirement to compete here, Smith and McElrath, they are full-time racers. They were in 2018. They will be in 2019. Multiple wins between them in 250 Supercross. McElrath has five career wins, three for Jordan Smith. So these guys are in the prime of their careers right now. Almost too close to call right now. Maybe a slight edge for the 12 of McElrath. Smith, quick through this triple-triple to draw even. They, they almost look like carbon copies as they go by side by side. And McElrath, he did say he likes this race because the focus on being perfect at every jump, he thinks it's good practice for regular Supercross races with multiple laps. Smith wants to be here just because he thinks it's fun, but it's not fun right now. It is serious competition and very close between the teammates. McElrath a little bit of a lead as the Rooks come up next. Oh, Smith, he could have had a little bubble there. I, we, we heard the rider saying the right lane is maybe not as good through the whoops because of being steeper, but a little mistake from McElrath didn't allow him the chance to come back. So McElrath beats Smith in the first run. Here we go down in the second half of this track. It was close. It's where McElrath started to edge ahead. Yeah, on the right side of the whoops, you could tell not quite as quick. Smitty came back. He mm. saw the mistake right at the end there. He got a little cross rutted as we call fishtailing and uh, not quite as efficient, but he's going to go back and go, well, you know, if I iron those mistakes out, I've got this, which everyone says going oh, back to the gate. Got to find a way to yeah. psych yourself up. Oh, boy, this is cool. Let's get psyched up for this. Ryan versus Ryan again. Dungey a slight edge over Villapoto the first time he won the round. Now they're going to flip-flop lanes. We'll see if that can make the difference. Maybe there's something that Villapoto learned that he can use against his old rival here. Two of the best to ever do it on dirt bikes are back for one night only on two strokes. Let's go racing in straight rhythm. Dungey a little bit of a lead. Key a whole shot there. Filippoto keeping it a little lower as they go into the go RV double. Trying to mount a comeback. Villapoto right there, Dungey. Did he get the drive? Villapoto got a good drive on those jumps. They're almost neck and neck now. Villapoto doing everything he can to try to get Dungey. Dun 
strategy, not someone to make a mistake, and Philip Poto makes that mistake. He crossed the line. I think that's going to be a DQ and a trip to the finals. Dungey through the America's tire roof section. Gets it, and he eliminates Philip Poto. The Battle of the Lions goes to Dungey. Hats off to both those riders, legends of the sport. The, cr the crowd acknowledging that, clapping for both these guys. Villapoto, true champ. I Put think he just said, hey, I crossed the line, and Dungey's like, ah. Dungey's like, I crossed the line before you, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened. So let's go through it again. Villapoto was really trying to hustle to make it happen down the stretch. Maybe yeah. hustling too much. Well, the thing is, watch, he tries to really soak up the jump, but the problem is it throws him a little too far to the right. That's why when you see these guys scrub, if they scrub to the right, they'll be all the way to the left side of their lane. And if they scrub to the left, you know, vice versa. And you see Villapoto, he realized he crossed it. He knows the rules. Well, he had to try something because Dungey had the edge there. The finish coming. You see Dungey reacting when he heard that. You know what that photo. reminded me of was yep. a few years ago when uh, at the, the Joker cup, Lane. When oh, they yeah. said, hey, man, you forgot the, the uh -huh. lane. <laughs> well, Dungey wasn't happy about that one. This one he's pumped because he's going to the finals and we are going down to Tina. Yeah, and I think just to be able to watch the Ryans battle out here at straight rhythm, I mean, that's a win in and of itself. And Ryan, to go up against Ryan, yeah. what a battle, uh, what a matchup. How would you describe it? Uh, it goes so far back for us, you know, but, you know, there's nothing riding on this thing. And, you know, we can both walk away pumped regardless, but this feels good to race against him again. It had been, uh, I think, five years or more. So Al Dungy, <laughs> got to throw that one for Villa, but... Uh, if anybody knows Villo, he throws some good jabs, so I got to give it back to him a little bit. So it's been so much fun to watch you guys. Now you do still have one more race. Absolutely. Um, just try to execute these last uh, this main event. I've never made it this far, or I have actually, and then I got edged out by Marv. So yeah, we'll just go for it and focus on the uh, overall um, each each individual run. And like we said from the beginning, give it our best. So thanks. Some very cool moments down here, guys, at Straight Rhythm. Yeah, it almost feels like Dungey has won the thing because he beat his old rival, but it's not over. There's a final. The question is, who will Dungey face off against? Will it be Jordan Smith or will it be Shane McElrath? McElrath won the first run between these two. Smith needs to win this or he's eliminated. We will, by the way, have trophy races for third. Villapoto will be in that one. Which rider will he go against? One of these riders will go to the finals. The other one will be in the third place runoff race a little later on tonight. And by the way, those are uh, old school Troy Lee Designs helmets. Troy Lee now operates a race team for KTM, but it started as a helmet painter, so he's got a lot of retro touches on the custom helmets for his two riders tonight. Smith on the rider's right on the 28 and edge over McElrath. Oh, really close right now. You see that similar rhythm, but like you said, Smitty has got the edge on this one over McElrath. Crucial to get good drive off these tabletops. A little speed check. And Smith continuing to stretch it. He has found something special in this second run. McElrath, the last ditch effort. McElrath struck that really well. He, he was very efficient. Now oh, they're almost neck and neck. It's going to be a track race to the whoops. I think McElrath might pull it off. No! Smith just hangs on. What a race. <laughs> Love it. Woo. You couldn't strip this stuff. These guys are so close. Round three coming up. Oh, yeah. So one win for McElrath, one win for Smith. I thought Smith had this one under control, but McElrath did something right here to get back with him. He was just really efficient about getting that rear wheel to the ground. In other words, getting the power. Watch the rear wheel straight to the ground. Big roost. Gets the great drive, but Smitty nails the whoops as well. Doesn't lose anything. And it comes down to literally a wheel length once again. Oh, man, Jordan Smith gets it. And that was about a tenth of a second between them there. Two riders, both out of North Carolina, who raced each other on the 50 CC bikes, the 65s, the 85s, the Super Minis, the 125s, and now 250, normally four strokes tonight, 252 strokes, waiting for their shot at Ryan Dungey, who will be in the final. There's Dungey's old mechanic, Carlos Rivera, on his right. They're reunited tonight. See the uh, black sweatshirt? That's Filippo's yeah, dad. I... He's his mechanic. And then... 
Yeah, these guys uh, got another round. Yeah. Want to hear some bench racing there between the Ryans? Yeah, if you could. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Carlos, his uh, old mechanic, now yeah. back with him, still with Factory KTM. And what's cool with Villapoto, his dad with him, as we say, like going back to the early days of racing when it's you and your pops out in the gate. And he was your, your coach, your mechanic, your transporter, your guardian, your everything. And this will be like going back to the early days of racing for these two. McElrath and Smith, many, many, many races against each other through the years. Now they're teammates, they're still friends. On the line, a trip to the finals in the 250 class of Red Bull Straight Rhythm. And you've got to figure identically prepared motorcycles, of course, as well. So who's the better rider? Let's find out. McElrath, the slight edge early. Oh, uh, now it's a 28 of Smith. He's got it. Yeah, Smith looked like he was just edged out. McElrath, this is going to be a close one. All day long, these guys were so close in times. I'm telling you, it comes down to who does not make the mistake. Side by side, coming to the halfway point. Smith gets the power now just a fraction of a second earlier. Big scrubs. They're trying to get all the speed they can back on this track. McElrath pulls back ahead of Smith. Yeah, he gets that clean. He's got a bike left lead. It's going to come down the woods. The left side's been a little bit quicker at times. Here we go! McElrath gets the win and goes to the finals. Oh, and Smith wins the previous by half and a bike And there's Troy in the crowd. Oh, Troy Lee. He had his hand up in the air. He knew someone, one, one guy in his team won. There he is. Yep. Crossed his arms. He's like, we went one, two in that one. I'm not happy. <laughs> So there you oh, see Smith had it, but a that big was scrub. A, yeah, that was a big scrub right there. And that allowed McElrath to pull even. Edge is ahead here. 28 to Smith, gave it everything he had through the whoops. Couldn't quite get there. You can tell these guys are giving it everything. They're getting loose in the whoops. And that's not typical for riders, but it's purely because they're going for the win at the end because it comes down to these guys. So McElrath eliminates Smith. Dungey eliminates Villapoto. Again, we will have a semifinal run for third. Villapoto and Smith. Let's send it back down to Tina. Yeah, and what a race between Shane McElrath and Jordan Smith. You guys travel together. You know each other. How much of a better racer does he make you? He really pushes me, and that's the cool thing about being such good friends is we can be serious and we can race aggressive but we can push each other and we, we can keep that fire going. And uh, I think that's huge. There's too many egos in uh, this sport. And we're just a couple of North Carolina guys. So man, the Lord is my strength. We're gonna go race number five as hard as we can. Yeah, and you guys went to three. I mean, you, we saw you pushing each other. Uh, you're going up against Dungey. What can we expect there? Um, I made the same mistake the last two runs against Jordan. and. That really cost me a lot, but I think I had a, a really good time that last one, but I just got to hit my marks. I know that I can be fast and be aggressive, and I just got to do it all in 40 seconds. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jane, and good luck. Jason, we'll send it to you. All right, so we're going to be ready for a final in both divisions. All the talk about two strokes tonight, the sound, the smell, the feel, but the mark of the beast is that big exhaust pipe that hangs out of the side of the engine. And in the 90s, when two strokes ruled, it was really about the holy triumvirate, three pipe builders at the top of the game. The 90s were cooler with two stroke pipes. What are two stroke pipes? There's something about the smell of a two-stroke that just takes me back to my childhood. Ah, two-stroke pipes. This is my favorite thing to talk about. Two-stroke pipes, what comes to mind is the cone pipe. I mean, there's nothing better than a two-stroke pipe that's just blue and just, ah. It was like a Sherlock Holmes pipe of the 90s. If you had that, that gleaming FMF or Pro Circuit pipe, you were on, you were on point. No chrome. The, the full on cone pipe. Rap. Man, two stroke pipes. The shorter, the louder, the better. Short silencers save lives. Favorite ratio in life 32 to 1. Well, if it wasn't already a party with incredible racing here at Straight Rhythm, we got the Red Bull Air Force. 
They uh, jumped earlier in the day during the national anthem and now flying in again. Some sparklers behind them because it's a party in Pomona. And all the fans that decided to come out tonight absolutely getting the treat of a lifetime. And it was so cool to listen to McElrath really put into context how fun this event is as he explained his relationship with Smith and like, hey, there's, there's no egos here. We push each other and this is a type of event where we get to race real hard and have fun and appreciate the relationship and appreciate obviously how much they love this sport. And earlier today when I was on social, you know, everyone was asking me, which Ryan Sal, which Ryan Sal? Kind of made the call. Uh, Dungey answering the call of Villapoto. He said, you can have fun with me on the gram, but I'm going to have fun with you at the finish line. We'll get ready uh, for that final. But first, the third race finishes. Wygant, I know you guys are having a blast. I mean, I, I, you tell me, this is some of the closest, strongest racing that we've had in the five years of this event. Yeah, I think you're right, Sal. Absolutely. Whether it's to the naked eye or to the stopwatch, we've had so many finishes come down to less than one-tenth of a second. A lot of them not decided until we got to the whoop section before the checkered flag. Unbelievable. The two strokes have brought a lot of hype and excitement but they have delivered in reality once we got on the track. We are going to have runoff races for third in each class before we get to our finals. So here are the two riders eliminated in the semifinals of the 125 division, Luke Rensland and Chase Marquier. As always, best two of three wins. This is for a podium, third place overall on the night. There's Rensland, Rensland in the Jeremy McGrath throwback helmet. There's Marquier in the JMC Motorsports Husqvarna. And let's get him started. This is about carrying momentum. That's a 90s helmet paint job right there. If I've ever I've seen one, love it. Renslin won his first matchup in the semifinals against Catanzaro, but couldn't get it done again. And that's why he's in this one. Marquier got eliminated by Carson Brown. Here we go. Little advantage maybe for Renslin, who's in that blue gear, the teal gear for Marquier trying to catch back up. Oh, both of them triple, triple through there. That was huge. That's important. They're getting the halfway point. They'll come over this tabletop section. Look a little bit different from Renslin there. Yeah, over the go RVing double. Looks like Renslin may be able to pull away just a bit. Can Marquier come back on him? Marquette's going to gain one bike length in the second half of the event. Got to get clean through here. This is where one of the six is going to be patient on the 125. Different rhythm again. They're side by side. Oh, Marquette, nice comeback. Little sideways before the whoops. It might not matter. It does matter because Renzen was just a little quicker through there and holds on for the win. Right when Marquette looked like he had a shot, like you said, Jason, just got a little bit, I think he got a little too much drive off that last jump. Little wheel spin. Didn't get the momentum into the whoops, and that is crucial on these 125s. Watch out, good little scrub, and then lights it up. You see there, the rear wheel, just a little fishtail. If it wasn't for that, that would have been another photograph finish. Yeah, Marquia was in position, but couldn't get it through the whoops. And Rensland has him down one to nothing in the battle for third of the 125s. We still have to settle third place in the 250s. That'll be Ryan Villapoto and Jordan Smith. So we'll send them to the starting gates here in just a moment. As the 125 riders, Marquier and Rensland head back. It's pretty cool, Rensland's team, when he races professionally, is Traders Yamaha, and their technician over there is Skip Norfolk. That was Jeremy McGrath's mechanic back in the day, so there's a bit of a natural connection. That is a Yamaha team that's actually a Yamaha bike, even though McGrath rode a Honda back in the day. Let's send it to Kate with our finalist from the 125 class. Carson Brown is definitely deserving being here in the presence of some of his icons over the years. You have Villapoto right beside you, Dungy. How cool and gratifying is this experience, regardless of what really happened? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a dream come true to be competing in the same race as all these guys at the same event. And, you know, I'm just having fun with it. I've got a smile on my face all the way. And, you know, all my buddies are here. So we're just having a blast pinning it. What have you learned yet so far through the day that you can now take to the final? Yeah, you know, just a lot of line choice and uh, section work. You know, there's other rhythms that everybody can do and just finding which one's best for me. I think that's what we're going to see, which one's best for Carson here. Another guy who is feeling that he's much more comfortable out there, that's AJ. Earlier we talked about that triple-triple. Now what is the big challenge that you're facing? 
it's just the mental game of it. Um, it's something I've always kind of struggled with my whole career. Um, the one thing I'll take here is I'm hoping that him being young, maybe he'll crack under the pressure a little bit. But Carson's a fast kid, and uh, he's not afraid to hang it out. So just going to do the best I can. And this is such a fun event, so just happy to be here. You can tell that his spirits are definitely high. Weege, I think what will be interesting to see is if he wins, what dance moves will we see? Yeah, great point, Kate. Does he have three dances saved up? Because we already saw the sprinkler and the worm. I don't know if James had any other dances up his sleeve back in uh, 01, 02, 03, 04 when he was doing that kind of thing. Back to the line we go with Rensland and Marquier for what could be the final 125 trophy race of the night. If Rensland wins it, he clinches third for this year's Red Bull straight rhythm. If Marquier wins it, we'll run him again. Marquier strong out of the blocks. Oh, Rensland coming back. Nice. Yeah. I got to give a lot of credit to the track builders. Both lanes have been so even, even at times when it looks like one's a little bit better, the other one comes back. So it's always hard to tell. A little mistake there. You saw Mark Yeah just clip that jump. That may have hurt him. And yes, it did, because now Rensland has a slight edge on that number 125. Halfway point. Oh. Yeah. Can Marquier come back? He's, I think he is. He scrubbed that jump so hard, he stayed low to the ground. He's got more forward bite. He went right the game. table, and it was better. It got him on top of the next jump. Marquier has taken the lead. Now it's the Roots. Rensland a big push. Oh! <laughs> Rensland a fist pump. I don't know if he got him, though. Yes, he did. By four hundredths of a second. I don't know how Rensland was able to figure that out. They both did 45 fives. It was so close. It was literally down to the finish line. Watch this. I don't think anyone could have figured out who had this well, until Rensland. we saw the timing and scoring. <laughs> Rensland knew he fist bumped. That mistake right there yep. from Rensland. This allowed Marquier to get the edge, but the whoop section got Rensland back into it. He had half a bike length behind him. Watch this. Absolutely nails against the front wheel. Oh. Oh, so close. And just like that, yep, there it is. <laughs> you see, yeah. it's so crazy. Different and cameras inch. make it look yep. like a different ride at one. So Rensland is going to be third officially in the 125 division. Marquier fourth. Rensland going to the podium. We'll give you another look. Nice little celebration from Rensland. Here this, we go. This is the actual official look of what you'll just see. That wheel just, yeah, it looks behind, and then half a wheel length. So now we'll just settle third in the 250 class. Ryan Villapoto, eliminated by his old rival, Ryan Dungey, will run off against Jordan Smith, who is eliminated by his friend and teammate, Shane McElrath. This is for third in the 250 class 2018 Red Bull Straight Rhythm. There's Villapoto, nine-time AMA champion, four times in the premier division of Supercross. Smith still looking for his first professional Supercross title. So you've got one of the up-and-coming stars of the sport exactly. with one of the most established players in the game, although Villapoto not a full-time racer any longer. Likes to say he's the best retired rider ever, and he doesn't mean that means, he doesn't mean that by saying, I'm the best rider that ever rode. He's done such a wide variety of cool events on different motorcycles since retiring. He's really embraced this retirement thing. Absolutely. But he's locked in against Smith, who's still a full-time racer. to the first jump for Villapoto. Not much in it at all. And I think Smith maybe has erased that gap and taken the number one spot away. Oh, they were so close. Coming into that, once again, still so close. Side by side, like you said, Smith with maybe a wheel length over Villapoto. They come to the halfway point. Smith just ahead now, opening it up to a bike length. Does Villapoto have anything left in the second half of the track to try to get it back? I think he does. Villapoto strong here. Oh, he made a little bobble there. Did that hurt him? Just a bit, but he's still strong in the works. Watch, he's close enough. Gets the power to the ground. Here, Here he is. comes. And I think he dug it out. Did he get it? Huge run through the works. And he got, got it. it from behind. The crowd is still trying to figure it out. The whoop section. Villapoto, what a run. And he gets the win over Smith. Well, the credit for Villapoto is he had a huge bobble and he somehow minimized the damage to say close enough. Watch this. This is that tabletop section. They'll hit the little checkpoint. They scrub it. You can tell 
that Smitty has the advantage over the double. This is the halfway point, the tunnel jump. The scrub right here. Then Villapoto, you see he got the power of the ground, really good. I thought that little bobble hurt him, but then he went over that table, drove off this thing, brought him almost back level, and then watch, get the power to the ground, and watch that through the whoops. You don't win four Supercross championships, folks, for nothing. RV just showing the boys why he's one of the legends of the sport. I remember a couple years ago, Chad Reed went on Twitter and said, kids can scrub, real men ride whoops, and Villapoto just showed oh. that whoop speed is still there to come from behind on Jordan Smith and get the win in the first trophy race between them. This is for third overall in the night. They'll have to go back to the line and do it again. Isn't it fitting that we're at a horse race track because every finish has been a photo finish, just like at the horse races. Unbelievable. And we'll lock in again, Smith against Villapoto. Man, Smith probably saying, geez, guys in race professionally in almost five years, but can still do some whoops. Jeez. What do I got to do? He th probably thought, I mean, he had the lead with maybe 50 feet to go. Yeah. Well, with the naked eye, we could see Villapoto just got that rear wheel down the ground. I call them the speed checks because you have to brake really hard, soak it up, and then try and get that rear wheel on the ground because it's a ramp downhill. It helps you carry momentum into that next section. And that helped Villapoto through those technical whoops. Villapoto, by the way, retro bike build for him based on a uh, probably a 1989 to 90-ish Yamaha. So here we go, Villapoto against Smith. Little edge for Smith early in this race. They switch lanes, Villapoto on the left side, now Smith on the right side. Oh, Villa Smith all the way over the top. Yeah, and Villapoto clipped that, but they both even out. Little mistake from Smitty. Villapoto pulled up alongside. Smith still able to hold the edge. Did Villapoto have something like he's used in the first race to come back? Smith does not want to let that happen again. They just passed the halfway point. Biggest lead Smitty's had all night long in any race, but Villapoto's strong at the end. Does Villapoto have another mad dash to the roots? Uh -oh, Smith's not going to let it happen again. And he wins it. We're going to a third runoff in the battle for third place. Yeah, he... Smitty had the slight advantage from the beginning, and even though the gap may have yo-yoed just a tiny bit, you could tell he never relinquished that lead. Villapoto clipped that jump, but he gets the drive. I'm telling you, RV is strong. If he's neck and neck in that second half of this race, this last one's going to come down really interesting. Look at him there, very efficient. Saw the foot slip yeah. off the peg. He's giving it absolutely everything. Unreal. So fun. Can't believe this guy retired. He looks like someone that's still hungry, trying to prove himself. He looks like someone trying to get a factory ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, would not say die in that one, even with the foot off the peg, kept it wide open. But Smith able to hold him off. And they got to try to get the heart rates back down. And in these trophy races, as soon as they finish, they go back to the line. So not much turnaround time at all. And we'll bring Smith and Villapoto back into it. All they're going to do is stop at the mechanics, lock the front end back down, which is what you do uh, so the bike doesn't wheelie off the line. Yeah, just stopped by dad, <laughs> popped it in just like way back in the day when they were, when RV was probably just a little kid. Well, it's cool for his dad, Dan. I got to talk to him yesterday. You know, by the time Ryan turned pro, he had a professional mechanic and dad got to go to the races. But he said, really, up until now, he's never gotten to go to the starting line with him in a professional race. So pretty cool opportunity for dad to soak in it. That's awesome. These gates are so tight, you won't see a mechanic next to a rider. But if you could go and stand on the end of that deck, if you're afraid of heights, it's huge. You're dropping off uh, two stories down to single story. And I always figured, man, you, you, you can't warm up. You literally have to just gas it off that thing and pretty much blind jump it. You, if you look from the camera angle, you don't see the landing. You see the following jumps. Once again, it's Villapoto versus Smith for third. Oh, good start from Smitty, but Villapoto's still right there. Nothing in, I think. 
Yeah, that's absolutely side by side. You cannot call a leader at this point. Maybe Smith a slight edge in the left lane in orange. Filippoto on that white Yamaha on the right, fighting back. Uh oh, Philo scrub that so good. I think he got a good forward bite, but he had to soak it up there. Foot off. Still side by side as they hit the halfway point. What a battle! Filippoto with the nose. In the last rhythm lane, the crowd responds side by side. They're going nuts. Whoop section coming up. Who's got the drive? Villapoto side edge. Smith coming back. Who's got it? Yes. Villapoto oh, does have it. And he flat lands a jump. He carries so much speed through there, and you can tell the crowd that hasn't seen their man for a few years. They're fired up. Smitty, what a run. Hold your head up high. Villapoto off the couch. Very impressive. Get yourself a little, uh, little metal there, you know? Man, these guys still got it. Very impressive what Villapoto is able to do. This might have been the closest run, maybe not the finish, but to have two riders side by side the entire race, I don't think we had another event quite like this. Uh, I love it. I, I was sick early in the week, and my voice is battling to keep up, but I tell you what, <laughs> I'm having so much fun calling this with you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying it from home. This, depending on how you look at the camera, they were side by side the entire event, give or take a wheel length. Yeah, we never really had a clear leader. Villapoto by a half bike length coming into the whoops. Smith cleaned the whoops up. Villapoto didn't have an edge on him. He just maintained that gap, but it was enough. Let's send That's it to Tina with I'm Ryan Villapoto. Yeah, neck and neck for that race. Uh, Ryan, how intense was that? I mean, it went to three there at the end. Oh, yeah, it went to three. and. Uh, Man, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Red Bull put on an awesome event. Uh, I just had to get the get the yeah the Yamaha um, Pro Circuit monster bike up there. I couldn't make it all Red Bull on the podium. So um, you know, Jeremy at Red Bull throws an awesome event here. It's a lot of fun and uh, one spot better than last year. So um, we'll work our way up to the top step soon. You know, so much of this is uh, kind of your fault, though, because last year you came into the two-stroke class and people absolutely loved it, and so that's what it was all about this time. Uh, so where do we go from here? Uh, you know, I just uh, I leave in two weeks to go to Australia to race Oz X Open, and then Auckland, New Zealand, uh, two weeks later. So, uh, and then my racing is back on a. Uh, Back underground for quite a while. Maybe Hangtown, the 125, will be the next time you see me behind the gate. Yeah, but overall, what a great race for you today. Thank you. South. Nice job, Tina. I got to say, that was probably one of the most exciting third place races uh, that I've ever seen. Villapoto clearly hungry for someone who says there's not much at stake. You guys have been uh, diligently asking questions in the social. Someone said, what's more important uh, jumps or the whoops at straight rhythm? That's a great question. I mean, you heard Carson Brown talking earlier about line choice and section choice and each rider having to figure out what's best for them. You can't really make too big of mistakes, but we have seen so many exciting races in that whoop section at the end. If, if you've got it, you can definitely come back. Excited for what these finals are going to look like here. I'm going to throw it to Kate right now, who has a report as we head into the finals here. One of the greatest things that I like about AJ and Carson is both of them have a big smile on their face. Both of them are both wide eyed for what's going to happen here in the final. Interesting to note about AJ. He came in here looking to have fun. I just talked to his team and they said coming to straight rhythm was just an idea they had as they were walking down the sidewalk. Then all of a sudden they get the tribute bike involved. Then they come here to practice and preview day and it's like AJ can't conceptualize how to even understand this track. Then he worked through fears. And now he's in the final. And for him, I think this whole event has been a big win. And then you take Carson, who's a guy who's just stoked to be around his, the, these legends. He's young, and he doesn't have much expectations but to go out and have fun. And really, guys, this is what it's all about. Yeah, no doubt about that, Kate. So Carson Brown getting to get around the names that he grew up watching and maybe make a name for himself in a way. Kat and Zorro and that rack racing team, they're all about the mental strength and, and trying to stay positive. And that really shined through for them because I don't believe Kat and Zorro was one of the faster riders early in practice and in qualifying, but he seems to improve every time he's gotten on the track. So even though Brown has been heads up lightning fast every time he's out there, the ever improving Kat and Zorro could give him a run here as we battle for the gold in the 125s. I've worked with Kat and Zorro in the past. The guy's got an incredible natural talent. Can you hit the nail on the head? He needs to believe he can get this done. Carson Brown's been riding strong all night long. 
But it's going to be fun to watch these guys go head to head. It's our first run of the finals for 125. Little lead for Carson Brown early. Oh, Katanzaro scrubbed so hard. A little mistake, and that allows Brown to pull further away. Yeah, Brown able to get that triple-triple in the middle of that section, but he also looks a little bit ragged. Couple little bobbles there, but Katanzaro not close enough to capitalize at this point. Carson Brown keeping the hammer down. Halfway through, trying to win this first run of the 125 finals. If he doesn't make a major mistake, he's got just enough of a lead over Ken Zara. I don't see him losing it. Into the American's oh. tire whip section, he almost did lose it. Hung the front wheel a couple of times. Probably not the way he wanted to do it, but he had built up enough of a lead yeah. where Ken Zara couldn't catch him. Yeah, Carson Brown, that certainly got his heart rate mm -hmm. spiked right there. But for Ken Zara, just a little bobble earlier in the race, but watch this. When you miss a whoop, watch, watch the front wheel. Misses one, goes in, then misses another one. He looks over because he knew it. Luckily, those whoops weren't so peaked in in the bottom. In Supercross, when you drop the front like that, and then again, we've seen many a time, you can ask Villapoto and Dungey, you drop the front wheel in the gnarliest of whoops, and you're rolling up the windows. Yeah, even the best riders can't hang on there. Luckily, the whoops not quite as big here at straight rhythm, so Brown able to hold on to the motorcycle and beat Catanzaro in race one. The cat here on the number 259 is going to have to go back and try to beat him, or he is going to be second place tonight. We'll update the bracket in the 125 class. It started with eight riders. Our final four were Brown, Marquier, Rensland, Catanzaro. Rensland beat Marquier in the trophy race for third. And now the only position to settle is for the win. If Brown gets this race victory, he is your overall winner of Red Bull Straight Rhythm in the 125 class. So Cotton Zero, who talks so much about the mental side, has got to figure out a way. Fight the demons, stay positive. Yes, Brown had the edge on him timing-wise. Most of the time they've been in the track. He got the edge on him this time, and they were at a head-to-head. -head. Let's see if Catanzaro can figure something out. He was down one to nothing to Rensland in the semis and came back to win the next two races to eliminate Rensland. Well, whatever you thought about last time, do the same thing. Repeat what you did. Do not make mistakes, hit your lines, and you'll put yourself in a position to win. It's so close, it comes down to who doesn't make the bigger mistake. That's a beautiful motorcycle that Catanzaro is riding. They think it's about $30,000 into it. He got to borrow it for the night. Will it be a race-winning motorcycle, or will Carson Brown's Husqvarna be the top 125 here at Straight Rhythm? Let's go racing. Kanzaro pushing hard, staying closer to Brown this time. He's certainly closer, but right there, Brown's able to go triple-triple, but Ken Zara goes double, triple-triple, so it almost evens itself out. Now this is crucial through the tabletop section. Yep, they go through the go RVing double over the tabletops. Wheel to wheel. Ken Zara giving it a huge run against Brown. Big scrubs together on the halfway mark, and Brown a little bit sideways, can barely get over these doubles. That gives the advantage to Ken Zara. But the whoops lay ahead. Oh, mistake there from Brown. Cam has got this. We're going to go to a third round. He does it again. He was down one to nothing against Renslin and came back. He was down one nothing against Brown and comes back. And you're right, Grant Langston, we're going to the third run for the finals. What a better way to settle it. Yeah, you got to love that when you get this point of the evening. Let's go back and forth. But AJ did not make a mistake, like you said. Brown makes a little ball off to the section. I think he tries to scrub. See there? That's the problem with these two strokes. When you're braking, you're sliding up the face of the jump. And then by the time you release the brake, it was a little too late. Scrub too much speed. That hurt him right there. Really made a difference. And now we're coming up toward the finish on the replay here. Yes, those two clips. Uh, Brown not getting over the jumps, but instead banging the bike off the top and clipping. Slowed down. Advantage the cat. So it's 1-1 one, one heads up between them, and it's all on the line right now.
Brown against Catanzaro for the top slot in 125s. It's kind of fitting to go to a third run in the finals, somewhat symbolic of how close the racing has been all night. Well, in 2003, there was a guy named Brown and a guy on 259 <laughs> that race each other. So, I Good mean, point. it's kind of fitting. Just needed a guy on triple one, maybe throw him in there. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Has been. Yeah. Yep. Long. Yeah, removed. he's just up here. He's in like the a tear now. off, you he's know. He's just up here in the announcer's booth now. Floating so, in the wind. <laughs> so Catanzaro on the 259. See how pumped up his crew. The rack racing team has been fired up all night long. They've got to be exhausted. But they've got one more race to cheer their rider through. JMC Motorsports Squad's got to be pumped on Brown, who only turned professional about four months ago. He's getting to learn what pressure is all about. A must-win situation. The well, winner of this 45-second run is the champ of the 125s. Whoever doesn't win is second place. Time we have to get the cameras out at the finish line. Brown, a slight edge with that Kia hole shot. Canzaro has a different rhythm through this section. Not gonna pay off this time. Brown with the early lead. Oh, Canzaro overjumped that first jump. He's gotta get this clean if he has any hope. He does get it clean. It brings him right back in the mix. Yeah, good recovery from the cat. But Brown, a big scrub to the center to maintain the slight gap that he has. Canzaro still there. He's only about a half bike left behind. Little bubble there from Brown. It's gonna count on the whoops. Here it is. Who's got the speed to the whoop section? A good one from Canzaro. He closed in, but not enough. Carson Brown is your winner of Red Bull Straight Rhythm in the 125 class. Canzaro had a run through those whoops. And we've said it all night long. If those whoops were a little bit longer. It could have changed the outcome of several events. Watch this. AJ gets a drive down. Watch. He comes from two bike lanes behind to watch. Oh, <laughs> Brown looked over. See off to the finish line. I Ken think Brown Zara had it. was afraid that he had been edged out there. He almost looked disappointed, but he does get it. He looks over, sees the cap closing, and puts oh. the bike on the ground to try to get maximum traction. One wheel length, mm -hmm. once again. But then, like I said, when you watch them land, Catanzaro was ahead, so that finish line, if you moved it up 10 feet, that could have changed things a little bit, but wow. Oh, that was spectacular, but Carson oh, Brown. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Team is pumped. That's the power of positive thinking. Even when they finish second, they're fired up. Let's send it to Tina with our winner. Yeah, Carson, and we're getting where eight hundredths of a second is what you won by that. Uh, what were you thinking, especially through this final stretch? You know, I knew I had to do it through the whoops, but I got sketchy in the whoops the last two times, so I didn't want to get too sketchy, but did it just enough, I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, I rode like crap during the last bunch of them, and just, I don't know what my deal was, but we made it happen, so I'm so pumped. I mean, 125s, um, only in two-stroke day. I mean, how does it get any better than that? I mean, Jensen Hendler got my bike freaking ripping, and uh, you know, the whole JMC guys and Fly and BBR, man, I can't thank everybody enough. It was unreal. It was fantastic racing. Congratulations. All right, Weege. Yeah, thanks, Tina. It has been a grand celebration tonight of the two-stroke experience and really hearkening back to the 90s, which is the last decade that the two-strokes really owned in the sport. A laid-back time, a fun time. Certainly, there were races to be won and big checks to be cashed, but it was a little bit looser and more laid-back than racing is today, and that's what we're celebrating, the 90s. <laughs> You can cooler. tell them describing. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. hey, I was through the whoops. Yep. Yeah, let's get talk about the 90s. We're cooler. The 90s, to me, were real. In my mind, the 90s was totally the golden era. I mean, it was. I think the scene back then was, uh, was rad. I think it's gone way too corpro. 90s and early 2000s was definitely the, uh, the time to be in motocross, I personally think. I also feel uh, grateful, I guess, that I got to live that time, live that life, so, yeah. Oh, those crusty days with the VHS were some of the best days of my life. Unbelievable how far we've come 20 years later. And everyone that is tuned in right now, fired up, 
for this final here at this fifth straight straight rhythm. Who is it going to be? I'm going to throw it down to Wigan right now. So our final is set at Red Bull Straight Rhythm. Ryan Dungey taking on Shane McElrath. So it's one of the best racers from now against one of the best of the recent past. Ryan Dungey is probably on the all-time route Mount Rushmore for this sport. But in the middle of 2017, he's retired. McElrath has been getting better and faster and faster and better ever since. Going to be hard to pick a winner in the finals. Let's send it to Kate. First time in the big class here at Straight Rhythm, and Shane McElrath knows what he is up against. It's Ryan Dungey. Last year on the line, you said you have to focus and get a little angry. How much of that advice are you taking right now? It's uh, It's been really tough to get to the finals tonight. Um, first time in the big class on a, a bike that's that can compete with the other ones, and I'm up against Ryan Dungey. I mean, I, I couldn't say enough good things about him, so. Uh, I gotta be on it. I gotta, I gotta be aggressive. I gotta get mean, and um, I'm, I'm not as nervous to race Ryan because it's, I mean, I, I don't know why, but I don't like getting beat by Jordan Smith, and I know he's the same. Um, but we're in the finals, and I want to do everything I can to beat Ryan. And knowing that he's going up against Ryan Dungey, this guy is an icon for everybody around here. The big question is, is are you looking to be the best retired guy out there? <laughs> no, I just, I got the opportunity to do this and I, uh, it was, it's fun. So Shane's good. He's been uh, winning this thing for a while. So uh, I'm excited to uh, get this one underway. It's good to make it to the finals. I would say that's absolutely true, especially a retired guy like him, huh? Smack around this race has been every time we've had it. The last two years, he's won the 254 stroke class. This is the first year he's competing at the highest level of the event. Let's see if he can win it again. Here is your bracket, your final four and 250s were Ryan Dungey and Ryan Villapoto. Dungey beat Villapoto there. McElrath edged Smith on his side. That set up the Dungey versus McElrath final. Villapoto beat Smith for third place in the trophy race. So we're locked in. Ryan Dungey, Shane McElrath. Dungey's been retired for about a year and a half. McElrath is an up-and-coming star of this sport. I know the riders keep saying this race is for fun. There's not a lot, a lot on the line, but if you're McElrath, it would be pretty big on the resume to say you beat Ryan Dungey, even if Dungey's retired. It'd be huge, even for Dungey to say, hey, I came out of retirement, yeah. won Red Bull straight rhythm. It makes people think, hey, imagine if he was out there. Either way, when riders say they want to have fun, they're only having fun when they're winning. So let's keep that in mind. <laughs> So Dungey on the number five. McElrath will be on the 12, a pair of KTM. So the bikes are pretty evenly matched. It's rider versus rider in our first run of the 250 final. Little lead for Dungey as we get to the first rhythm lane. Dungey does have a slight edge. McElrath is still right there. These riders almost look like carbon copy side by side. Almost reminds me of a Dungey Muskin battle from a few years ago. But still nothing in it as they hit the to the halfway point. Absolutely side by side. How can you pick a winner at this point? It's dead even. Who can execute this final set of jumps? Key word, execute. Be patient through here. You gotta get there clean. McElrath with a real length lead. Coming to the works to try to get a oh! McElrath from behind. I he think got McElrath it. got it. Yes, he did. The crowd, they don't even know. They're listening. Incredible. Woo! McElrath. That is three hundredths of a second. That might be the closest race we've had thus far. And they were equal all the way down this track. It is so hard to call it at this point. We just know it's exciting. They're giving it everything, trying to soak it up, drive everywhere they can. Hard on the brakes there, hard on the gas and the clutch. Get your weight back, get up through the gearbox. And look at that, McElrath came through and another wheelie across the finish line. Yeah, you're right. I say it was probably the last 10 feet. Yep. He pulled back away from Dungey. And by the way, that is the fastest run of the night for McElrath. That's what it took to beat Dungey. <laughs> That is also very brave, wheeling, dropping the front wheel into the face of a big double. That just shows you the skill these guys have and the confidence they have. And the fact that they're throwing all caution to the wind to try to win this thing. McElrath doesn't care about the jump that's after the finish. He was doing everything he could to beat Dungey to the finish, and he did it. 
Dungey's got to beat him in this next one. Well, on behalf of the fans, I'm rooting for Dunge right now. Let's take Just this three, this boys. Going. Okay. This is awesome. If I have a voice for the third time. <laughs> yes. The bikes are screaming, and so are we. It has been one heck of a good time here at the Fairplex in Pomona, California. Fifth That's edition this of this Red Bull Straight Rhythm. Oh, yeah. And to put the whoop section to get that classic two-stroke oh. sound and some good back-and-forth passing right in front of the grandstands has added to the excitement as well. So Ryan Dungey, he's in a must-win situation. If McArath beats him in this one, it's over, and McArath is your champ. If Dungey wins it, they'll be one-to-one, -one and we'll have to go to a third race. Whew. Come on, boys. Let's keep this fun going. This has been awesome. They've switched lanes. So once again, another new factor, because some of these jumps are, they have a little hole or a rolled edge or a square edge or a, it's something. They've got to keep that in mind. Let's do it again. McElrath and Dungy. Little edge for Dungy off the line. McElrath on the number 12, trying to come back. Oh, this is so close. Once again, they look almost like a carbon copy, but you're right. Dunge has a slight lead this time around. Unlike last time, where it's too close to call, but once again, McElrath closed up a little bit as they hit the halfway point. This is where it really comes down to who can nail this last half of the track. McElrath still fighting, but Dungey has been perfect throughout this run. He gets through the final jumps. Now into the whoops. Can he hold McElrath off? Like yeah. there is three. Just what the fans wanted. They are. Well, there's no one in the stands anymore. They're all up against track side, up against the fence, because, well, they want to be right there. They love the smell, the sound. What an incredible run. Dungey, beautiful throughout this run. McElrath had his moments, but Dungey never made a mistake. Oh, he, Dungey, typical Ryan Dungey. This is how he won all his professional championships. Not always blindingly fast, but so consistent. Never makes a mistake. He looks like he never even got off the couch. Old, what's it? Al Dungey. Al Dungey, yeah. Man. <laughs> Looks like the same Ryan Dungey that was a Supercross champ just well, over a year ago. Stick to riding dirt bikes. No need to go selling shoes right now. You've got this, <laughs> Al Dungey. That was incredible right there. Well, his old rival, Ryan Villapoto, called him out, put the Instagram post out, and said, Al Dungey, get off the couch before you're married with children and come race with me. Dungey answered the call, beat Villapoto in the semifinals. He beats McElrath in one of these final races. Now it all comes down to this. McElrath and Dungey L. for it Dungey, all. a.k.a. Ryan. And there's the post we were just talking about, Villapoto with the Instagram post. Yes. <laughs> yeah, got the Photoshop of I Ryan Dungey on Al, 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 Al Bundy, Bundy growing yeah. up. I yep. mean, even in South Africa, I was a big fan. Yes, that got Dungey fired up. He said, mm, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to straight rhythm. Villapoto is waiting for him. They put on quite a show battling each other earlier in the night of the semis. Dungey gets the edge, but that wasn't for the championship. He's got to beat McElrath here to get it. McElrath, no slouch, winning this race in the 254 stroke class the last two years. We're not letting four strokes race this event anymore. No. He has to adapt to the two stroke. And can McElrath beat Dungey for the win? It literally comes down to this, as we've said before, but this is it. One to one. This is the final of the finals. Oh, Weege, who you got? Never ah, it's too hard to call. <laughs> Dungey and McElrath, let's let them rip on the two strokes one last time. Side by side. Maybe too close to call. Slight edge for Dunge, perhaps. No, it goes back to McElrath. Yeah, like you said, too close to call right now. Now McElrath has it. They go to the jump. Dungey got over that jump clean. They got to get off these tables. Super clean. Oh, beautiful for both of them. Side by side. Maybe a half a bike length for McElrath. Dungey is giving it everything he has to come back on the number five. It's past the halfway point. No mistakes right now. Just ahead for McElrath. Dungey's going to drive. It's going to come down to the ropes. Side by side of the wall jump. Into the ropes. And for all the marbles. And McElrath is your champion of Red Bull Straight Rhythm. He did it in the 250 class, which is now 125.
25s. He moves up. He gets it down again. Ryan Dungey, you got to take your hat off to him. The crowd is up on their feet. What a race. Phenomenal. Got to love that. Not bad for a retired guy, but not good enough to beat the current racer, Shane McElrath who won in the stepping stone division of this class the last two, uh, this event the last two years, but now he's won in the premier division and he's pumped up as he salutes the crowd. His team owner, Troy Lee, in that mob of people out there, has got to be happy. Shane McElrath has conquered the 252 stroke division, the premier class of Red Bull Straight Rhythm for 2018. Wow, what a night of racing. Unbelievable. This was probably the biggest gap we saw between them throughout the entire evening. So close. Dungey, Dungey was able to get a good drive on those roots. You saw him get kicked. If he got that good drive, it would have been another photograph finish, but Shane McElrath has been strong all weekend long. Yeah. And there is Shane. Got the retro Jeremy McGrath-style helmet. With uh, Troy Lee, the famous helmet painter, who now runs this team, put the dingleberries on the bottom. <laughs> kind of a shout-out to, I think, the old lowrider car culture yep. in Southern California. They brought the look back tonight. There is Villapoto, who will be back for the podium celebration. Let's send it to Tina, though, with our champion. And Shane McElrath did it tonight. Uh, what a race. It goes to three. Take us through what your mindset was there at the, uh, that third race, the last half. I, uh, I just had to be like Jordan, uh, like we talked about. Um, had to get, get a little angry and uh, know that, that a good run wasn't going wasn't gonna to win. I mean, these two sit on, on my right and left. They're not four-time champs for uh, nothing. So, I mean, it's, it's 40 seconds in a straight line, but this really teaches you a lot of technique and stuff, and, man. God is good. This this is awesome. You've won this event before, but in the lights, what does it mean now to win in the two-stroke class? I was very nervous coming into this. Um, I only put about 30 minutes worth of riding on this bike on a 252 stroke on Supercross ever. And I was really nervous um, coming in. Uh, Thursday at practice, I I didn't feel very good at all. Um, but this morning in practice, every run was just getting better and better. And I think those are my best runs later here tonight, and it's awesome. Feels good. Enjoy this. What a big win. Congratulations. All right, we'll walk over to Ryan Dungey here. Ryan, uh, fresh off the couch. <laughs> Al Dungey. Yeah. Uh, how do you sum up that race? Oh, I, uh, I, going into, after the second one, I'm like, all right, we got some good for him. That left, that right lane was really good, but uh, I was like, man, I got to push this one, and he's going to be good in it, and he just, yeah, I just I got behind him a little bit. I couldn't ever make up the gap, and I got close, but it was fun. I uh, I ever heard him say he was nervous. I was a little nervous coming in today too. Just you know, you're going fast, you're pushing it, but um, the bike worked awesome. Had a good time, got off some good starts, and I was pumped to even get down to this uh, to where we did. So uh, I wanted the win for sure, but uh, second that was good too. Well, it was great to see you out here. What a fantastic night here, guys. We'll send it back over to you. Rich's tail. A little rags to Rich's tail. McElrath is the one who was really an unknown amateur, and this Troy Lee Designs team picked him up and said, hey, we got to get you to California to test a motorcycle. And he's like, I've never even been in a plane before. Now he's beaten two of the greatest in the game. Let's send it crazy. to Sal. Dude, that, was, that was good, though. I'm glad it An was incredible three. night of racing. That final is everything you could have asked for. Those guys pushing each other, giving us those three those three incredible back-to-back -back races, and McElrath with the humility, you could tell he was stoked in beating Dungey, and Dungey, we are thankful that you came off the couch. We'll present uh, some, ch some winners shortly. Stick around for the back end here at Straight Rhythm. And there you see, still stoked, can't stop smiling, Shane McElrath, the 2018 Red Bull Straight Rhythm champ. Also, congratulations to Carson Brown in the 125 class. And hey, how about those two strokes, hey? The real stars of the show, an incredible day here at Pomona. And you know what? We go 
from straight rhythm straight into the big daddy red bull rampage the biggest and most challenging free ride mountain bike event in the world the ultimate combination of tricks and aesthetics it takes place live in the desert of virgin utah the only contest where the riders build the lines from a blank canvas on the mountain i am heading from here straight there make sure you watch it live on red bull tv on behalf of our entire crew we will see you at Rampage.